Yo, yo. What's going on? What's going on? I'm going to try to lower this shit a little bit. So, what's up? Oh, 16 passengers. It's another 10 minutes. Yo, man, I, I just want to say this too, man. Eris Landy Lara, bro, that was a hell of a knockout against Mike Zarafa, man. It seems like as Eris Landy Lara has gotten older, he's adopted a different style where he's not using as much mobility, just being more flat footed and really sitting down on his punches. And he's been getting some nasty knockouts, bro. I don't know if it's because, I don't know if it's because he's just in his, in his 40s, he don't feel like using his legs no more. It's like Laura went from being like a mobile, slick outboxer to being like a flat footed sniper, bro. Absolutely nasty knockout, bro. Mike Zarafa was out of it. But what had happened was Mike Zarafa had overcommitted to a punch. There's Landy Laura pulled and he countered with the one two. The, 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 uh, the left hand hit him right on the butt, man, right on the jaw. Uh, Mike, Zarafa, Mike Zarafa hit the canvas immediately. And um, he he was out of it. He was out of it. That was a full fledged knockout, man. Eris Landy Laura always had power though, um, but he used so much mobility. He wasn't sent down on his punches, so everybody thought that he ain't had no pop. You know what I mean? But if you watch like the Alfred and Gulo fight and shit like that, you you know he got he he had some cracks. But now he's adopted this new style where he's not using as much mobility. He's sitting down on his shots and he's taking his time, man. But every shot that he's throwing is counting. And it has bad intentions behind it. And that's why we've been seeing Eris Landy Laura really get some devastating knockouts. So with Eris Landy Laura, man, we got to see that, that Danny Garcia fight next, man. We got to see that fight next, bro. I don't know if May 4th will be too close, but Eris Landy Laura versus Danny Garcia on Canelo and Jaime Munguia undercard will be lit. If not, throw them on the undercard of Javante Davis and Frank Martin. Lit car right there, bro. No reason why that fight can't happen. Danny Garcia was in attendance, so that let me know that he was spectating because I think he still wants that opportunity at Eris Landy Laura. And I know exactly why he wants Eris. I know exactly why he he wants Eris Landy Laura because he's he, he's adopted a flat footed style lately. And with Danny Garcia being a good counter puncher, he feels like he could line up that kill shot for him. Yeah, you know I mean, he believes in his power. He believes in his counter punching abilities. So he sees something that, you know, may favor him stylistically. You know what I mean? So that's what's going on. Yeah, for yeah, he, he's not moving no more, bro. You know what I mean? He, he not with none of that. He coming to he, Aris Landy Laura taking his time, you know, keeping his defense tight and he looking for that kill shot. And he gonna take his time and he gonna he gonna stay patient until he find it. You know what I mean? Like that Thomas Lamana knockout that Eris Landy Laura had, that was nasty. And this one right here, brutal, brutal. But Roly Romero and Isaac Cruz are in the ring right now. Roly Romero came out to some some uh, kinky ass music. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was Prince. I don't know what that was, but that's the type of time he on. Isaac Cruz, he had a nice little intro that he had the dude come out with a little guitar and shit like that. They ready to get busy, man. They ready to get busy. But I seen that uh, Isaac Cruz weighed 138.8, so he was definitely underweight. And I believe Roley was 139.4. So they both in shape. They trim. They ready to go. This is about to be a fucking banger, bro. Yo, tell me y'all predictions below before this shit unfold. They're announcing them right now. I need all predictions for Roley Romero versus Pitbull Cruz, man. Tell me, I seen the odds, man. The odds, the uh, the bookies, whatever you want to call them, the odds makers. They got Pitbull Cruz as the favorite. Y'all, let me know if y'all going against that. Y'all with that? What fashion is this fight gonna result in? Knockout, decision, split decision. 
leave your comments below, man. We need to know. I need some. I need somebody to to tell me what this prediction is. Whoever come out, whoever come out on top with this prediction, man, they're gonna get a shout out for sure. We're gonna shout you out. Orlando Finney says, Roly by knockout. Okay. Health as well. He said, I got Pitbull round eight. So I'm assuming he's talking about a knockout. Come on, y'all. It's 10 people in the building. Get the likes up. You know what I mean? If y'all enjoying the live fight commentary. And tell me y'all predictions, man. Let me know. Only seen two predictions so far. We got 11 people in the building. Damn, Roly. Yo, Roly cut the motherfucker. Yo, his abs is crazy. He in crazy he dumb shit for sure. Okay. Pitbull round nine. So y'all, y'all think he gonna drown uh Roly late? I don't know, man. Roly has like a like a uh seems pretty confident. He seems very confident taking on Isaac. I think I think his confidence comes from Isaac being directly in front of him and like not giving him any type of mobility or outboxing type style. I think he he's confident in his power as to where he could line a pitbull up with something. But Roly got to understand that those shots come back and that might fuck him over. They just touch gloves. We about to get this popping right now, y'all. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. Ghost says, I got Pitbull KO round six. He said, Roly got the best of both genetics. He had black. I mean, if you really think about it, bro, you know, all these Hispanics have black. You know, I'm half black. Like Cubans, they they black. They black people. You know what I mean? So, for sure. There's Landy Laura black. You can't tell me he not black. All right, round one starting. Oh, Isaac Cruz already shooting that overhand. Oh, yeah, they're getting to it off the rip. Okay, okay. Roly putting the straight shots out there. He's trying to utilize his jab, and Isaac is getting right to the shits, man. Ooh, good left hook from Isaac. Woo-wee! Roly's on the back foot. Oh, oh! Oh, shit. Okay. Isaac Cruz is back. Isaac Cruz coming to get it, bro. He ain't wasted no time. Yo, I rock. Oh, good shot. They're having some pretty good exchanges right now, boy. Off the rip. Off the rip. Roly trying to slow the pace down. He trying to keep him behind that jab and, and take those small steps backwards. But Isaac, he getting right to it. He looking for those big hooks, whether it's the left hook or the right hook. He really getting to it, man. Roly tying up. <laughs> Yo, man, I rock with Isaac Cruz, bro. He really, he really what he say he is. He's definitely on his pit bull type time. He trying to catch Roly with that same overhand he caught Gamboa with, for sure. Roly being extremely patient, though. He not fighting that Isaac Cruz pace. He running them into shots. He just landed a good right hook and then stepped off of the line. He gave us some mobility, just like he did against Ismael Barroso, which I said played it. Yo, that, that played against him. That played against him. Isaac Cruz going to the body in the clinch. The style that Roly Romero is doing when he fought Ismael Barroso with it, he had gotten clipped and had gotten knocked down. Oh, Isaac Cruz has hit Roly with a bomb. Oh, 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 Roly hurt. Roly hurt bad. Oh, oh, Roly hurt bad. He hanging off a dear life. He hanging off a dear life. Oh, his legs are gone. Yo, his legs are gone. His legs are gone. Isaac Cruz got to jump on him. He hurt bad. He hurt real bad. Oh, my God. This is round one. This is round one. Roly really holding on to Isaac Cruz's left hand for dear life. The referee is separating it. And Isaac is going for it, man. He heard him bad, bro. He heard him real bad. Roly's still trying to recover. His legs are not underneath him, man. This is really bad, bro. Okay, the ref is interfering a little bit. He don't like Isaac Cruz's dirty tactics. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Roly's still throwing, though. Ten seconds left on the clock. He's holding on for dear life. I think he understands that he lost this round. He's just trying to get through it. He's hurt bad, y'all. 
I think it was a left hook that had gotten Roly. And I told you guys, Roly Romero is a sucker for the left hook, bro. I'm telling you, man, he cannot defend the left hook. And I told y'all, regardless of the trainer switch up, he was not going to be able to fix that mistake in one training camp. In one training camp, he wasn't going to be able to do that. But he's hurt bad. He got through that round, though, so that's 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 very important. And Roly is in great shape, I'm sure. He uh, he's he, he has some great conditioning under his belt, so he should be able to recover within this minute rest that he has in his corner. He's asking for more water. He understands he's hurt. At this point, Roly is experienced with being hurt in the boxing ring, so he should understand and have that mental fortitude to continue pushing forward. But let's take a look. Nasty left hook on the temple. Nasty left hook on the temple. He clinched up right away. But it was a nasty ding ding right on the top of his head. He lost all his equilibrium. His legs was gone after that. That was a beautiful left hook from Isaac Cruz. All right, so now we're starting up the second round. Let's get a let's get a look for how Roly Romero's legs are. Seems pretty stable so far, but he's not giving us much movement. Roly just trying to keep him outside with the jab. Isaac Cruz throws another left hook. Roly Romero is dropping his, his backhand every time he throws his jab. This is a bad flaw with Roly Romero that has cost to him multiple times throughout his career, but it just seems like he's not able to make that adjustment. But Isaac Cruz is countering with hooks from, from uh, both hands. He's throwing the overhand on the right side, and he's, throwing the, and he's leading with the left hook as well. So he's just looking for one of those bombs to land. But definitely... First round in the bag for Isaac Cruz. Roly Romero seems like he's still not all the way there yet. Isaac just continues pushing forward with his tight high guard, and he's ripping Roly to the body now. Roly Romero's trying to fight him off, but his legs don't look that stable. His legs do not look that stable, y'all. It's almost – it looks like Roly's in the – like he he's throwing punches as if – He's in the later rounds, and this is only the second round, so that lets you know that that shot had taken a lot from Roley. That shot from Isaac Cruz took a lot out of Roley, and Roley is clinching at all costs. Did I call Roley last night? No, I did not call Roley last night. Nah, man, I told, I'm a man of my word. I said I wouldn't call him because, you know, he in training camp. You got a fight tomorrow. I promise you I didn't call him. This don't... This, what's going on with him right now don't got nothing to do with me. Another left hook lands for, for Isaac. Roly eats it, though. Roly eats that one. That one didn't land that flush, but I'm telling you, Isaac is finding success with that left hook early, and this is a bad sign for Roly Romero for him to be getting hurt this early at the beginning of this fight. But Roly, he's trying to box him. You know, he's giving some mobility, but the problem is with his mobility, he his balance is shaky. His balance is very shaky, man. That, that oh, nasty body shots from Isaac Cruz. Yes. Uh, that, that's crazy. It's crazy how this is happening right now, man. He's 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 circling to his right. He's circling to his right, I guess, trying to avoid Isaac Cruz's uh, right hand. But as a result, he's running into the left hook, which is a shot that he had got hurt with. So if I'm in, if I'm in Roley Romero's corner, I'm strongly advising not to go, uh, not walk to – his right because it, it, as a result, it may leave a likelihood that he runs into Isaac Cruz's left hook. So don't go to don't go to your right because you know you went fire for that left hook, and that's something you can't afford to really take right now. This was a pretty good round, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna edge this out to Isaac Cruz as well. That's that's gonna be two old Isaac Cruz for me, but it seems like Roly Romero um, isn't as hurt as he was in the in the first round. But his stability doesn't seem to be there still. Let's see how he comes out at the top of the third. Because as of right now, it's a little shaky. You said Coach Bullet is, is, is grinning cheek to cheek right now. You can tell. You can tell Coach Bullet was sorry about Roley leaving him though. You know what I mean? Those counter hooks keep touching Roley. Yeah, Roley has. And this is what I was talking about. Nasty overhead right from Isaac. Isaac Cruz landed the harder, more effective shots in this second round as well. So it's 2-0 Isaac for sure. But uh, what I wanted to say was the reason why I trust that Isaac Cruz more in this fight because he's more defensively responsible. This is stuff that I've been saying multiple times on my channel. And now y'all getting a gist of what I'm saying because I haven't seen 
Isaac really get hit with any clean shot so far. I'm not saying that he won't, but so far I haven't seen anything clean. But um, Roly, I've seen get hit hard multiple times. You know, that could have easily been a knockdown in that first round, but you know he was able to survive. If that was 135, Roly, I don't know if he would have recovered though. I'm gonna just say that them extra five pounds may have helped him. Roly just tying up, just tying up. He doesn't want Isaac Cruz working on the inside at all. Hey, Isaac Cruz is just finding his way in. He's walking to him with the high guard. Oh, he's looking for that overhand, man. He's throwing away the jab and coming over the top with the overhand right. And uh, Roly Romero is, is avoiding the shot by a centimeter, man, by a centimeter. A lot of clenching up for Roly Romero. Definitely hit the likes, man. Hit the like button for sure. Roly Romero legs seem to look, be a little bit more underneath him now. Seems like he got a little bit of snap on his punches now. He's just throwing one, two that Isaac Cruz caught the gloves. And he's providing more mobility. His legs definitely look more solid. So that's a good sign for Roly Romero and his team. But he's providing a lot of mobility. A lot of mobility. You know, he's shooting, he's shooting single shots, one to two shots, and getting out of the way, attempting to outbox Isaac Cruz. Now, if I'm Isaac Cruz or if I'm in Isaac Cruz corner, I'm definitely trying to use my jab to find my way inside. You know, you want to freeze Roley Romero. You know what I mean? Isaac Cruz don't really like the chase guys. So if I'm Isaac Cruz, I'm definitely using my jab to get in, and I'm either throwing something over the top or I'm touching his body. Since Roley Romero had had a pretty bad experience in that first round with getting hurt and being rocked, in all honesty, I would really be focusing on the hitch, uh, on the body shots. You know, I would really be focused on the body shots, and Isaac Cruz is working Roley Romero on the inside. And now they're exchanging on the inside, and Isaac Cruz is definitely getting to it. But Roley Romero bows out and goes back to the, move, to the movement. The mistake Roly Romero is making right now is that as he's moving, his hands are down to his waist. You know, Isaac Cruz could easily come in and he could easily come in and shoot something over the top while you're on the move and catch you with a clean shot. If you're going to be given some type of movement, have some deep defensive responsibility and, you know, keep your hands up. Just because you're out of range doesn't mean Isaac Cruz can't close the gap. Wow. Isaac Cruz's confidence is at an all-time high. He always shows that dog in him. You know, he always comes forward and, and tries to be the aggressor in every circumstance possible. But you could tell that he just feels like he has Roley Romero's card as of right now. I don't really see Roley Romero winning any of these rounds, in all honesty. How do y'all have the fight scored? We got 16 people in the building, man. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. We see uh, Sebastian Fondora warming up in the back. Look how, look how skinny his arms is. Look. <laughs> like a fight like a motherfucker, though. Yo, Sebastian Fandura is hilarious, bro. He don't even look like, yo, if you looked at him, you would never think he would be boxing, bro. Yeah, that's a 6'6", six, six dude. He's 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> Boy, an NBA player with boxing gloves, though. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> very, very skinny dude. It don't even look like he he ever boxed a day in his life. That's hilarious. Boxing shit is funny. 3-0 Pitbull. Okay, so we see the same thing. Uh, health is wealth with the $2 super chat. Well, two, I, I believe that's Euros. He says, Chris, I mean, uh, Cruz versus Matias will be a bloodbath. That, that, that's a fact. That's not going 12 rounds on either side. But um, a big question that a lot of people really wasn't asking was if Isaac Cruz would be okay at the 140-pound division. You know, he's a lightweight. You know, he moved up and wait for this opportunity against a bigger man than Roley Romero. You know, Roley Romero was also a lightweight, but you could tell that he would have no issues uh, moving up to 140. And you could tell that he wouldn't have no problems, uh, you know, acclimating to the weight class, which it looks like Roley Romero already did. So it seems like it was a long time coming and moving up in weight from 35 to 40. You know what I mean? But, you know, Isaac Cruz looks okay. You know, he doesn't look discouraged at all about Roley's power or anything like that. His power is obviously there because he rocked Roley Romero off of the rip. 
and um, he's letting his hands go. You know what I mean? I don't see him being gun shy. I don't see him uh, showing any signs of fatigue so far in these four rounds they've been fighting. So, I mean, he's checking all of the, the uh, boxes on my list right now. But uh, Rolly Romero's trying to fight him off. He's trying to let go some shots. But it seems like Isaac Cruz is catching everything, which can still have an impact on you. You know what I mean? It can still have an impact on you. We, when you catch the shots on the glove, when you catch the shots on the glove um, against a hard puncher, even if you're catching them, you can still feel the effects of it. It can still rattle your brain. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, high guards isn't, isn't always the best tactic, but you'd rather catch it on the glove than catch it on the temple or the chin or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? So, Oh, he looks hurt again. He looks hurt again. Roly Romero looks hurt again. He got hurt in another exchange against Isaac. He got hurt in another exchange. Teach says, look at Roly. He looks hurt. His chest or arm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take a look at that. His arms are definitely low. His arms are definitely low. But I don't know. I don't see anything that's making me think that he's injured necessarily. Maybe you on to something. I don't know. I'm going to take a quicker look. I'm going to take a, a more like observant look at that. But Isaac Cruz is landing bombs on Rudy Romero, and he is not responding well. Um, you know, he was resorting to the mobility and the boxing, but it just seems like Isaac Cruz is still having his moments. So I think I, I think that Rudy Romero has made a decision in his head where he's just going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, blow for blow with him, which doesn't seem to be the best idea. But, you know, Rudy Romero is very limited. So there isn't much that he could do in the boxing ring, in all honesty. You know, he's not this well-rounded guy that could resort to multiple things. So, you know, if plan A isn't going to work, then he's just going to be himself and resort to, you know, banging away. But I've seen Roley Romero get hurt in that round as well. Not as bad as the first, but he definitely had gotten rocked. Let's get that dude up out of here. We don't do that spam shit over here unless you cut a check, my brother. Won't do none of that. Roly fighting like he's scared. Well, that's something that I had told you guys, you know, early on when they first announced the, the Pitbull Cruz fight. Um, you know, it seems like ever since he had gotten hurt by Javante Davis that he's been extremely hesitant. Um, he doesn't trust in his punch resistance. He doesn't believe in his chin. You know, we've seen it with Ismael Barroso, who was a come forward pressure fighter that's a hard puncher. You know, so I was expecting the same results out of Isaac Cruz. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm not surprised at all that he looks hesitant against uh, Pitbull. He doesn't want to get knocked out. He said, really got more heart than Shakur? That's crazy. That, why, why Shakur catch it straight, man? Why you got to do Shakur like that? Only thing I'm seeing for Roley is recovery. And a little bit of footwork and lateral movement. Yeah, he definitely recovered. In comparison to the first round, his legs seem to be under him a lot more. And, um, yeah, he's given his lateral movement. But in all honesty, man, I don't think his lateral movement is being effective at all. He's giving you movement. Isaac Cruz is still landing shots. You know what I mean? Um, that was a nasty left hook to the body. I, that definitely took some out of Rooley Tank. That was a nasty left hook to the body in the exchange they just had. But he, he, he took it well, though. You know, I think that the most of, oh, another right hand on the temple. Isaac Cruz is ripping away at Roley's body, man. This is not a good look for Roley at all. Um, if I'm Roley Romero, man, you know, it's just a bad stylistic matchup in all honesty, man. I don't think the mobility is serving him any good, you know. So I, I think that he's just going to have to believe in his defense. And he's going to have to let shots go and try to get, Isaac Cruz's respect. He's going to have to be Roley. Be the Roley that had them highlight real knockouts, that was able to get that WBA uh, regular title. You know what I mean? What got you that opportunity with Javante Davis? You know, why, why you were saying, why you was calling it, why you had that hashtag sign up for KOs? You're going to have to resort back to that because, you know, the outboxer shit isn't in you. I understand you Cuban, but you don't come from that Cuban schooling. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's what I would advise Roley to do, you know, but it just seems like he's in a messed up predicament regardless. Look at Isaac Cruz leaning on Roley as if he's the bigger man. 
pulling his gut, pulling his hands out, pulling his hands down, and resorting to all different types of tactics to try to hold Isaac Cruz up off him. This is this is a this is a bad fight for Roley, man. Bad fight for Roley. He's posting with his jab and ripping to Cruz's body. I mean, uh, Anonymous says, I haven't seen Roley take a single step forward. I mean, yeah, when he attempted to take that step forward, he had gotten clipped. So I'm sure he's extremely mindful of that, and I don't think he wants to feel that man's power anymore. So, you know, although him going backwards may be a bad thing for him to do, I think going forward may be a bad thing for him to do as well. He's giving Roley a warning about holding, which he should be because he's not giving any offense to – oh, he takes a point away from Roley. That just makes things worse, man. We in the fifth round. Wow. Wow, Roley's in a situation right now, man, because you could argue that he lost four rounds in a row, then just got a point deduction. It's not a good look for Roley at all, man. Oh, man, another another bad overhand. Another bad overhand. Isaac is letting his hands go. He is punishing Roley. He is punishing Roley, man. Wow. This is not a good situation, man. Roley definitely hurt. They mentioned in the super lightweight champions, Devin Haney. Roley Romero, Super L, Teofimo Lopez. It's a lit division, man. We need to see some unification soon. It seems like all the champions are occupied with fight dates as of right now. Super L fighting Leon Paro. Teofimo fighting, what, Sam Claggett, unfortunately. And uh, who, who's the other one? Devin Haney fighting Ryan Garcia, so... Everybody seems to be pretty occupied, you know, out of the champions at 140. And Roley Romero going through a dog fight right now <laughs> where Isaac Cruz getting punched on. And the body shots are sinking in. That's a good observation. Once we see Roley Romero's legs dead, then that'll tell you everything you need to know about the body shots. The one thing about those body shots, man, it takes the legs from you, you know, and that's really the only thing uh, that Roley has right now. That's going good for him in some aspects. Because Roley's having some moments where, like, he'll land one shot, then get out of the way and making Isaac reset. You know what I mean? But if he gets the legs completely dead and he forces – and that forces him to fight directly in front of Isaac, then that's just a knockout waiting to happen. But Isaac Cruz is making it his business to go to the body. According to Joe Goose's unofficial scorecard, he has at 49-44. So he gave Roley one round. I think he's being a bit generous with that, in all honesty. That's just me. Isaac still looking for them big hooks. Let's just start real quick. J Cash, what up? What up? We doing some live fight commentary right now. Sounds like Roley needs a knockout to win this fight. That's a fact. You know, I, I highly doubt that you could. I, I think Joe Goose is being pretty. Uh, generous with giving Roley Romero one round from what I've seen. You know what I mean? But, you know, I don't see how these judges – oh, good right hand from Isaac Cruz. Um, I don't see how these judges could give Roley a single round. You know, starting from the first, I, I don't know what round you could really give him. I don't think Roley has had um, any moments, any significant moments in order to give him a round, not more than Isaac. So I think this is a clear shutout so far, plus the point deduction. He may very well need a knockout. That's what it's looking like. Smash the like button, man. Shout out to Texas 16 South for that. Hit the like button for sure. We definitely in the building. We definitely active in these streets, man. You know what I mean? This is what we giving up. Nasty overhand. Nasty overhand. The punishment is just accumulating. The punishment is just accumulating. 
on uh, Rolly Romero, man. You know, he's going backwards. He looks like he's showing signs of fatigue, which lets you know them body shots are piling up. And he's taking a lot of damage, bro. I mean, he hasn't taken the most damage. You know, I think that his mobility has been saving him a little bit. But it's been some clean shots. And Pitbull Cruz is not phased by Rolly Romero's power in the least. Which, you know, is kind of, you know, impressive to me considering that he's moving up in weight. This is his first fight at 140, and he's taking on the bigger man, you know, quite easily. You know, Rolly Romero is about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, this is a big 140 right here. You know, he was a big lightweight. Uh, Isaac Cruz is extremely undersized for 35 and 40. So to see him be able to handle Rolly, that's pretty impressive, bro. Rolly Romero is still a big puncher. You know, he can be the weak, the weak link out of the champions at 140, but, you know, he has pop. He could crack. You know, Javante Davis said that Rolly Romero is the biggest puncher he's ever been in there with. So, you know, I just think stylistically, man, this, this fight is just all wrong for Rolly, man, and it's showing, unfortunately. And I wonder if Rolly Romero, Rolly Romero has it in him. Oh, that boy Rolly looked like, oh, Rolly looked like he got a little ball spot. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see that. They got it. They, they had the bird's eye view on Rolly head. He got a nice little, uh, nice little patch up there. Oh man, he was stressing. He was stressing this camp. When the alopecia kick in, that's how you know you you, you having a you having a rough time. You know what I mean? Rolly Murrow coming out, showing some type of speed, some snap on his punches. Good start for Rolly Romero this round. Rolly Romero landed a good right hand on Isaac that threw him off balance a little bit, but he continues to march forward. So, uh, Anonymous says Rolly Chin looks better. I mean, you could you could contribute that to you know moving up in weight. Trying to figure out how to stop this damn laptop from making that ding noise. I thought I had something going, but so according to the puddle, the total punches through seven rounds. Isaac Cruz is outlanding him, but Rolly has outthrown Isaac, surprisingly. I would have never thought that. Oh, good left hook from Isaac. It just seems like every shot that, he, that lands clean on Rolly is having an effect on him. Um, and the power of Isaac Cruz is real, man. And this is an absolute dog fight right now. This is an absolute dog fight right now. Rolly, Rolly's... Uh, Providing a little bit more resistance this time around. Rolly Romero getting back on his bicycle. Oof, good exchange. I wonder if Rolly is actually capable of hurting Isaac Cruz. You know, Isaac Cruz just doesn't look phased. Like he has like a oh, oh, Rolly's hurt bad. Rolly's hurt bad. Rolly's hurt bad. He's hurt again. He's hurt again. Oh man, I think Rolly about to hit the canvas, man. Rolly about to hit the canvas, man. Oh, man. Oh, good right hand. Oh, man. Rolly is hurt. Rolly is hurt. Tie up, Rolly. Tie up, Rolly. Tie up, Rolly. That ref looking at it. The ref looking at it. Tie up, Rolly. He's not tying up, man. He's completely out on his feet right now. He's completely out on his feet right now. They're about to stop this fight. They're about to stop this fight. They're about to stop this fight. Rowley has to do something now if he if he wants to get through this round. He got 10 seconds left. Isaac has to fill the moment. But he's letting Rowley slide. He's letting Rowley slide. He's letting Rowley slide. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I wonder what Rowley's going to think of right now. Yo, Rowley is out on his feet. He's out on his feet. Was that another left hook? Wow. That was, a, that was a good combination Isaac threw right there. Woo-wee! Rolly didn't try to tie up anything, man. 
at all. Wow. Woo wee. You said round eight. I don't know, man. That's starting to line up with what you said. You might, you might be bringing something to reality right now. You might have manifested something. Roley is out. Wow, he was out on his feet, man. It just looked like he was just operating off of pure survival instincts. Wow. He hurt bad though, but that corner is landing back out. They still believe in him. They still believe in him. Uh oh, the doctor's looking. The doctor's looking. Don't tell me the doctor gonna stop this fight. People in the crowd saying to stop the fight. Oh, so the, the ref, the ref is letting it be known another bad sequence and he's stopping the fight. So be aware of that, y'all. Don't be surprised if Isaac land one clean blow and the ref stop it. That's how bad it is right now. Roley's on the bicycle immediately. Ooh, wait, that was a nasty combination. Isaac Cruz needs to feel the the the, uh, the urgency, man. This fight isn't within your reach. This man is about to be the new WBO world champion. Well, WBA, I'm sorry. He's about to be the new WBA world champion. Isaac Cruz is a seat like a few punches away from being a new world champion at the 140 pound division. This man about to walk into some serious money, man. Okay, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, some tape hanging on, on Pitbull's gloves. Fuck. That just gave Roley some time to recover. Shit. Damn. Man, y'all got to hurry up. What is y'all doing? Wow. Y'all giving them time to recover. Let's go, guys. This is what the referee is saying. Wow. Y'all got to have that tape ready, man. Y'all should have seen that in the corner. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus, Pitbull Cruz is the new WBA super lightweight champion. Wow. He just put himself in the mix. Something crazy. Roly Romero is extremely disappointed. He's sitting on his stool. He can't believe what happened, man. Isaac Cruz is the new WBA Super lightweight champion, man. He just threw himself into the hottest division in the sport of boxing, man. And he just ran himself into some motherfucking money, dog. Roly Romero is now out of the equation. Isaac Cruz now has made the statement necessary to be mentioned as one of the kings of the 140-pound division within his first fight. Never got a world title at 135. Took the chance, moved up to 140 to fight a champion and is now the 140-pound WBA champion of the world. You cannot make this shit up, man. Wow. Wow. Woo wee Wow. Roley was unresponsive, man. His head snapped all over the place. The ref did the right thing and stopped the fight, man. That was a good stoppage. He did what was right. Cannot get away from that left hook, man. Roley Romero is a sucker for the left hook. Two left hooks. Two left hooks in that sequence. Right hand grazes him. Left hook comes back around, rocks him. The referee did the right thing, man. The referee did the right thing. That is insane, bro. That shit just make Gervonta look so much better, bro. This man came off of a Gervonta Davis loss. You know, took the fights that was necessary, took the chance, went up into a weight, a whole new weight division, being an undersized lightweight as it is already, took the chance, went up to 140, 
and defeated one of the champions in the weight class, man. Pitbull Cruz is officially a world champion. And if you know this kid's story, man, that you should be happy for this man. This man done went through hell, bro. His story, his story is different, man. He done been through all the lows that could be presented to you in life. And for him to, you know, put in the work, sacrifice, you know, take them chances. You know, shout out to Manny Pacquiao promotions, man. I believe that Isaac Cruz is still a Manny Pacquiao fighter. And um, he got himself a world champion. Wow. Wow. Shout out to William Jimenez with the $5 Super Chat, man. It is very much appreciated, man. You know what I mean? I, I like to usually just watch fights to myself or, or to with the people that's around me. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, you know, I had to come on here and chop it up with y'all, man. The nation, you know, I got I got the best support system on YouTube. You feel what I mean? So I definitely had to show y'all love. Oh, uh, yeah. Earl Spence laughing his ass off right now. Oh, you already know it. He in the building as far as I'm concerned. He said he was heading out to Vegas. So, you know, he said he, he said 40K. Isaac Cruz stop you. And uh, thank God Roly ain't take that bet because that 40K would have been wired, you know, the following morning. Leonard Ella be in there with that fake ass beard, you know, that dumb ass uh, feather on his hat. You know what I mean? He thought he had something. He thought he had something going on. You know, Mayweather Promotions takes a L. L. Wow. Isaac Cruz is emotionless. This motherfucker, a sociopath. You just won your first world title, man. You big head motherfucker. Motherfucker fitted like a nine to three fourths over there, being emotionless. Okay, he's smiling. Never mind. I take that back by what I said about Isaac. But yo, Mexico lit right now. You see them people in the crowd going crazy. I see somebody throw a bottle of Corona in the air after he won the world title. I'm like, oh shit. Somebody threw a cerveza. Shout out to my boy Tito Stakes with the $5 super chat. He said Mazuma Mob. Oh, yeah. Uh, that ain't no doubt. Shout out to my boy Tito in the building. He's the one that came up with the name Mazuma Mob. You know what I mean? So shout out to the boy, man. Yeah, yeah. They, they done started a riot in that motherfucker, boy. Jordan Plant really rubbing it in on Rolly Romero right now. Broly got a big ass fucking plate of humble pie. He was like, huh, you know, happy Easter. Um, you know, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh Resurrected himself, so happy Easter. Oh, we don't punch his vicious boy. Of course, he's heartbroken, man. He just lost his world title. He didn't even get to get a he didn't even get to defend his title. I'd be heartbroken too. How many title defenses role he got? He let that five, three, five, four more. He called, yo, he, he called two niggas dwarves, bro, and got stopped by both of them. Ain't that some shit? He called two motherfuckers dwarves and got stopped by both of them. Ain't that some shit? CJ Gutierrez Boxer says, Roly career on the big stage is over after this. Um, He probably talked himself back into another big money fight, man. You know what I'm saying? Roly Romero knows how to market himself. You know, I'm sure they're going to give him some little easy little work real quick. You know what I mean? Clean a couple dudes up and he'll get the yapping. he get the run of his mouth again and he, they'll put him in another opportunity. You know, he's with PBC. He with Al Heyman. He be straight, bro. He with Mayweather Promotions. They're going to put him in a good situation. Um, if he doesn't get a world title again, he'll be in a position He'll be in position to get some money. So uh, I, I ain't really too stressed out. If I'm a part of Roly Romero's team at this point, you know what I mean? But what I do know is I know Coach Bullet laughing like a motherfucker right now. 
Okay, so we on to the main event now. Oh, he said he want to smoke with all them niggas. T.O., Devin. You ain't met to Subriel, though, nigga. You ain't met to Subriel, though, nigga. Yeah. You said Gervonta. You said Devin. You said T.O. You ain't met to Subriel, bro. Oh, wait. Let's do it. Mexico versus Puerto Rico, man. Yo, William, I, I just mentioned it right now. He met, he didn't mention Matias' name. I wonder what Matias got to say about this. That nigga got a buzz cut with a high fade. That nigga Isaac Cruz, a, a demon. You know, demon time. So. All right, man. Next. Oh, wow. You, you talking crazy. <laughs> Yo, you got to cut it out, man. Shout out to Health as well for the two euro. Two, uh, is that euros? I believe that's euros, man. I fuck. With the two euros, he said, bring back Jim Gray. The fuck Caleb Plant wife doing? Yeah, that's fucked up. That ain't even Caleb Plant wife doing that, but he did the, she did the one with Roly. I get it. I don't know, man. She she That's what she do, bro. She been doing work for PBC. You know what I mean? I guess since they on a different platform, they moved her up and gave her another opportunity. So I ain't going to talk crazy about her. You know what I mean? I ain't going to talk crazy about her. You out of pocket, though. Health as well. Shot the fuck out. But you start bringing up the kitchen, that's how you know you a, you a bold motherfucker. You said Roley will never win again? Wow, man. That's a bad job. I wonder what Tate got to say about this. And he just called out Gervonta. He called out Tio. He called out Devin Haney. Did not call out Subaru Matias' name. Could that have been a mistake? Or, you know, maybe he just was forgetful of his name at the moment? Maybe. But, you know... You could tell that Matias wasn't somebody that was on his conscience. Oh wow! Why you got the broken heart? You was you was rooting for Roly Clips, Mazuma TV Clips. You feel why you feel bad for Roly? That's boxing. That's boxing, bro. He said Barroso versus Isaac isn't bad. Uh, I don't know. I think Isaac too much for the old head, man. But I mean, why not? You know, Barroso most likely gonna be his mandatory anyway. He just uh packed up O'Hara Davies, so they probably gonna mandate that soon. So why not? Okay, so all right, y'all. So now we on to the next one. They got a little bit of commercials playing right now. Monkey man, that's a crazy ass title name. That's like that's just low key sound racist. But uh, whatever, I, I I don't watch movies all like that, so. I yeah, mean, I ain't gonna make no assumptions right now. Monkey Man is a wild ass title name, movie name. Wait, what? Did it... he didn't forget Mazuma? It's about the money. I mean, I mean, yeah, I get it. I mean, when you prize fighters, you fighting for a prize, but you know. He could get some money with Subaru. Why he can't get money with Subaru? It's a unification fight. When the best fight, the best in the division, the money gonna come. That's 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 the stigma that. Uh, that's what a lot of people don't really understand. It's like, bro, if you fighting the best fighters, you are gonna run into some money. You know what I'm saying? So, really, ain't no excuse. Eddie Hearn cut the check. Don't they be saying Earn with Hearn? They signing with Eddie Hearn for a reason. He putting the check up. That shit can make some money. 
You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Chris with the five dollar super chase. He said Roly the type to put his dog down to get an even score. Roly the type to beat up the jeweler for the WBA chain. Roly the type to fight Clarissa next. Yeah. Chris got some shit on his mind, man. Shout out to Chris with that five dollar super chat. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to get this shit right right now. Trying to get this shit right, right? Really now. to try to take away Fedora's uppercut. And after the fourth round, it says when well, he'll start applying it. All right, we back. We back active. We back active. So they doing a little, they doing a little intermission right now. They got Brian Custer talking on here. So I'm about to ask y'all again. And what 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 uh what round was that stoppage with Roley and Isaac Cruz, man? What, what round was that? Did somebody get that right? I seen somebody put an eighth round KO. Was that the eighth round? Yo, Orlando Finney, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. It was the eighth round, man. So shout out. Let me let me go back up to see if I could find that person who put that round. There was been a lot of common sense done. Let me see. Shit, I might have lost it in all honesty, bro. Shit. Let me try. Let me try. Nah, man. No, wait. No, Health is Wealth got it right. All the way up here, he said, I got Pitbull round eight. Anonymous was close when he said Pitbull round nine stoppage. So shout out to Health is Wealth, man. He definitely was on the money for this one. He might got the hot hand this time. You know what I mean? But now we got we got a new fight coming up. Tim Zeus, Sebastian Fundora. Let's get it popping. You know what I mean? Shout out to Health is Wealth for the great prediction you know what i'm saying so uh i'm gonna let y'all know right now man well i'm gonna actually let y'all tell y'all gonna tell me um who do y'all got what's the prediction for sebastian fundora versus tim zoo man we got the son of a legend and tim zoo looking to make his own name out here trying to get out of his daddy's shadow going up against sebastian fundora the six six softball junior welterweight i mean uh junior welterweight junior middleweight you see what i mean so Let's see what the predictions is, man. Can Roley come back? Of course he could come back, man. He got he got a good team behind him. And when you got a good team behind you, they'll find a way to make some shit happen, bro. So he's with Mayweather Promotions. He's with PBC. He's a PBC fighter. So, you know, usually their recipe for coming off a of defeat is, you know, get them back in the mix against somebody who's sturdy but not like a top-tier guy. You know, get you a couple wins and then put you in another position to make some money, man. Roly Romero is good at marketing himself. He knows how to talk. He's funny. You know, he's appealing to the fans. He's comedic. You know, he provides that humor in the sport of boxing. People want to see Roly Romero. Whether they want to see him win or they want to see him lose, they want to see him. So, you know, Roly Romero, you know, he got to take some time off, you know, let his body recover because he did take – he did he took a lot of clean shots today. You know what I mean? Enjoy that money. I'm sure he got a nice little check for this fight right here. And um, try to get yourself back in the mix, because guess what? There's a likelihood that Ryan Garcia might come up short against Devin Haney. And where would that leave Ryan Garcia? With two losses, just like Roley Romero. So, you know, maybe they could possibly build a fight up to fight each other. That would be a good build up. You know, that would be an intriguing fight. That, might, that fight might do some numbers. So I want to say it's over for Roley Romero. Now, in terms of winning a world title at this current climate at 140 pounds, I don't know. I don't know, man. I think that I think that conversation is down the drain at this point. But in terms of making money or making big fights or getting himself back in the picture, keeping himself relevant, he has opportunities. He has opportunities. Shout out to my boy Orlando Finney with the five dollar super chat. He says, "Good com commentary, bro. Y'all appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate all the super chats that I've been receiving today, man. The support is real. You know what I'm saying." The support is real. Thank you guys very much, man. Isaac versus Subriel next. I mean, Isaac didn't mention Subriel name, you know, and with, you know, with Subriel Matias being with Matchroom now, you know, Eddie Hearn probably trying to keep things a little bit in-house right now. They'll probably line him up with Devin Haney, Richardson Hitchens, or somebody else like that within his stable before they match him up with Isaac Cruz, unless they see an opportunity to like unify, you know, the money makes sense. But Isaac Cruz told you what his eyes are set on. Tio, Devin, um, and Tank. That's what he's looking at. That's what he wants. 
And now that he got a belt on his side, it, it might increase his likelihood of getting the fight going. You know what I mean? And, you know, Teofimo Lopez wants some come forward aggressive fighters to, you know, stand in front of him. Isaac Cruz is one of them dudes. You know, you don't want nobody that's going to move. So what's up? Isaac Cruz versus Teofimo Lopez, that'll be a good job. That'll be a good fight. John Smith says, with all due disrespect, this is boxing. I want to see boxing, not a clown show, bro. Uh, I mean, I don't think – I think Roly Romero boxes at the end of the day. You know what I mean? You just seen him. He, he put his belt on the line and he came up short. So he's boxing. He's definitely boxing. He, he, you know, he's attempting to put his money where his mouth is. You know, he rolling the dice. But I don't mind the good promotion. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind seeing a clown show in the lead up to the fight. That shit entertaining to me. I like when guys go back and forth or they don't like each other, or they got beef, or they both talking shit to each other. It makes for a good storyline leading up into the fight. That's what make it interesting for me. You know what I'm saying? I still got Tim for the next fight. Me too. Does Tank stop Isaac this time? I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, Isaac Cruz is very hard to hit clean from what I see, man. You know what I mean? Like his defense, he's pretty responsible with bringing his hands back and stuff like that. Like he's he's defensively sound. He's not the dude that's going to be making you miss and be all slippery in the pocket. But there's a way about his high guard that, you know, he doesn't really get hit too clean. You know, Gervonta had several opportunities, even with the hand injury, to catch. Um, like he, he tried to line up the money shot several times against Isaac Cruz, but he wasn't able to land it. Now, can the injury can the injury be the reason why? Um, that was happening, maybe you know, Tank is capable of stopping anybody, he has that type of power. You know, he has one of the highest knockout ratios amongst champions in boxing right now, ain't no doubt about it. But I don't know, I haven't even seen Isaac Cruz rattle, I haven't seen him get dropped, I haven't seen him get hurt. So, I don't know if this dude is just is, his chin is just like that, like, is he that durable? You know, I'm not sure if Tank could stop him. And, you know, if you look at a lot of the big punches in history, they always come across somebody that they can't knock out. So Isaac Cruz may very well be somebody that Tank can't knock out. That's possible. John Smith says, you call that boxing? He don't box, bro. Give me one skill Roley got other than him talking. Bro, what I'm saying is he's technically boxing. Like, he's in the ring. And he's putting his belts on the line and he's giving you fights that you're going to see. How can you say this man's not boxing, but you're literally watching him throw punches in the ring? As far as I'm concerned, that's boxing. You know what I'm saying? Now, in terms of skills, you know, it's pretty obvious that Roley Romero is not the most skilled guy. I just came on here and told you all he's the weakest link in the division. You know, but, you know, Roley Romero, he has great conditioning. You know, he, you know, uh, he got good hand speed. He's explosive. He punches hard. He has some great abilities. You know what I mean? So, but to say that this man is a clown show and he's not boxing, that, that's blasphemy. I don't think you can win a world title, you know, regardless of how the way he won it, I don't think you can win a world title by doing clown shows. I think you would have to box in order to become a champion in boxing. That's just me, though. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you entitled to your opinion, but to just jump out the window and just say that he's not boxing, I, it, it, it don't really make – it's not adding up. It's not making sense to me. Shout out to Floyd Senior that's in the building, man. He's sitting there watching the fights. Shout out to him. We up there in Cruz. Where is Earl Spence? Is Earl Spence in the building? Is Earl Spence in the building? I see you, Dennis Ugas. They put Zab Judah name. Yo. Who did him like that? That's fucked up. Yo, they put Zab Judah name, and it was your Dennis Ugas, Caleb Plant in the building. That's fucked up. <laughs> Yo, Yo, Mazuma, unblock my other account, Content House. I'm blocked in the chat because I said F Southpaw. Is you sure? Are you sure that's why you got blocked? Why you? Oh, Earl Spence is in the building. Shout out to the boy Earl Spence. Terrence Crawford should have popped up too, man. Terrence Crawford should have popped up too. Like, yeah, nigga, why you trying to take that fight away from me? Why you trying to finesse your way into this fight? I just beat your ass. 
You don't deserve this fight. Yo, Sebastian Fundora got a nine and a half inch reach advantage with a nine inch height advantage. They both came in the same weight though, one fifty two point eight. So they they in shape. They ready to go. This is gonna be a tougher fight than Keith Thurman, though. I'm telling you. He said, <laughs> he said, off topic, but what haircut do you get? Um, it depends on how I feel. You know what I mean? I was gonna really bring this shit all the way down. I was gonna bring it down to like a three. I was gonna get rid of the, the jaw, but I want to try braids. So I'm gonna let this shit grow out a little bit. But today I got a low fade. I get a low fade from around here. I use sometimes I get the high fade where it come all the way up here. But I got a low fade this time. And you know, I had the nigga just shape me up and all that good shit. Shout out to my boy. Uh, if you in Philadelphia, crafty C R A F T Y dot Lou L O U. One of the best barbers in the city, man. He cut Jalen Hurts. He cuts, he cuts pretty much all the big Philadelphia Eagles players, man. And I'm happy to say that I started with I was one of his first clients. So shout out to my boy Crafty Lou, man. He in the building for sure. One of the best barbers in the city. But um, the reason why this shit, this shit all crazy up here is because I'm about to I'm looking to break this shit soon. <laughs> shout out to my boy Chris with the two dollar super chat. He said iPhone face scan did Ugas wrong. Yo, that's crazy, bro. They said Zab Judah, bro. Why do like I understand they both like bald. You know, and they might both have alopecia, whatever the situation may be, but they look nothing alike. <laughs> like, I think Uga's darker than Zab. He taller than Zab. Like, come on, man. That's disrespectful, man. It was like that that one fighter that we was working with at one point in time. His name was Atifo Burleson. They used to be like, oh, he looks like you, Dennis Uga. They're like, well, he don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, they think. Cause you black, you know, you bald or whatever that everybody look alike. It's like, bro, do y'all really like pay attention to people's features? Or y'all just be saying shit? Yeah, bro, he he, he the crafty Lou. He the man, bro. Shout out to my boy. Yeah, Zab Judah was crazy for sure. KBGJ says, "I said this would be a tougher fight than Thurman. Watch this." That's a fact. John Smith back at it, man. He, he he being a little combative right now. He said, "Bro, I don't know if you're being politically correct, but you didn't. Just, but you didn't just say he has a title. That's what's matter with the sport. Roley has a belt, and Booth can't get a fight, bro. And I respect your word, bro. I I mean, if you really follow my channel, bro, you know I'm not politically correct. I speak what the fuck is on my mind." You know what I'm saying? So one thing I'm not going to do is be politically correct. I don't give a fuck about press credentials or being cool with nobody. You feel what I mean? Whatever I feel like it. But I, but you over here talking about that really don't box. That, that that's not boxing. If it's not boxing, then what the fuck is boxing? Because the nigga was a WBA world champion. I don't think that get more boxing than that, bro. Like, just say that you don't like his style. You know what I mean? Just say that you don't like what he bring to boxing. You know what I mean? I'm just disagreeing with you on the standpoint that you said that this is not boxing. I mean, he in the ring, you know, he's sacrificing his health. He's letting his hands go. He's trying to hurt, dude. You know, he has a boxing record. He fought Gervonta Davis, bro. Like, he, he's, fought at a, he's fought at an elite level. You feel what I mean? So, it, it is boxing. It's just something that you don't rock with. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, help his wealth be wild. He got jokes. He said, Fondura look like he work at Google head office. Hell yeah. He like the best accountant in the motherfucking building. Tim Zoo about to walk in. Uh, Sebastian Pandora had a tough little fight outfit on, man. I like the little the fire that he had on the shit, man. That's what's up, man. He really embracing the moment right now. Hold up. What he coming out to? He coming out the DMX? Oh my God. 
One, two, one, two, come through, run through. Oh, man. Yo, Chum Zoo coming out the DMX. Ooh-wee. Oh, yeah. Two, one, two, come through, run through. You don't know what the gun do. You niggas want to try fuck around and start a ride. He said, I sub, bro. Sorry for the weird question. I just had to take tips because you know what you're doing up there. I mean, it's cool, bro. It's all good. Ain't nobody judging you, my brother. Welcome to the channel, man. Fandora got more legs than a bucket of chicken. That's hilarious. That's funny. Guy ate KFC today. Let's go, champ. He came out the DMX, bro. I fuck with DMX heavy, dog. They remind me of, I think, uh, when Terrence Carver fought Hank Lundy, he came out to, to DMX. And then uh, Boots had fought like a couple days after DMX died. He had came out, uh, what's my name, DMX? I'll be the best. You see the rest is looking like you need a rest. He came out to that, John. Rock with DMX. Heavy, heavy one of the greatest ever. Australians love gangster rap. You'll be surprised. Really? DMX is my guy. I hold him as he one of my favorite all time. I think he one of the greatest ever. DMX is my guy. Yeah, just based off of that DMX song, dog. I'm rocking with him heavy. Health is wealth, Mizuma. Why American fighters weave in and out the ring before entering? I don't know. That's a really good question. Me personally, I never done it. I've done it like out of like you know like joking around and shit like that, but I don't know. I just feel like they seen one person do it and they just followed the trend. I don't know. It's like when people like when boxers pose and shit, they put their hand up like this. It's like where did that even come from? Because I find myself doing it as well. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm just being a follower. I don't know what the situation is, but I don't know. I just I guess it's just part of boxing culture. DMX has strong connections to Philly. I actually didn't know that at all. But I'll tell you what, I remember the one time I was cho I was chopping it up with one of my homies that I went to high school with. And uh, he, he was a little white boy or whatever, a little square dude that I went to high school with. And he was like, yo, man, I was just playing pool with DMX. I was just shooting pool with DMX. I'm like, man, shut up, man. What the fuck you talking about? Man, you ain't playing no fucking pool with DMX. He was like, yeah, man, I was just hanging out with DMX, man. He's a real cool guy, man. I'm telling you, he, he beat me in pool. I'm like, man, whatever, nigga. He said, I got a picture right here. I'll show you. I said, man, show me the picture. I'm thinking that this is some nigga that was acting like DMX, bro. Best believe this dude was shooting pool at some regular bowling alley in Philly with DMX, bro. They said that it was just him and two other guys. No security, nothing. They was just chilling, kicking it. I don't know if DMX had a concert here at the time. I don't know what the hell he was doing, but regardless, bro, this man played pool with DMX. That's a cool-ass story, bro. I'm pretty good at pool, too. Shit, I would have, I mean, I probably would have tried to smoke DMX in that joint. <laughs> Fuck you mean? But nah, that, yeah, real cool story. So I know DMX used to be over here and shit, but I didn't know he was locked in with Philly niggas like that. I'm going to have to do my research. What? Bro, they saying Roly was actually up on one of the cards. Oh, that oh, that means they was trying to line. They, that means they was trying to line Isaac then. So in that case, I'm glad uh Isaac line uh knocked him off. I mean, I can't stand that shit, man. That's disgust. If that's true, that's disgusting. I need to see the scorecards for that. I wonder if they're gonna show the scorecards for that, man. Whatever judge had, they, they them judges need to be investigated, bro, on some real shit. Yo, I'm going to tell y'all this, though. My pop put me on to this shit right here. Hawaiian Punch, right? But it's not the regular joint. It's called Lemon Berry Squeeze. If y'all fuck with, like, sweet stuff like I do, like, I fuck with candy and shit like that, bro. I don't know why I always been like that. Y'all fuck with, like, sweet drinks and shit like that? No ditty. This shit fire, bro. Fire. I know that was a little off topic. My apologies. But, uh, nah, bro, like, if you if you... If one of the judges had him up on a scorecard, bro, there wasn't a single round that man won convincingly. 
You know what I mean? So that's disgusting. So I'm glad that, you know, Isaac got that stoppage because who knows? They probably would have robbed him on the scorecards or it would have been like a BS split decision or some shit like that. Tim Cheatham, that's who you talking about, uh, Jake? Where can I get it? I don't even know. My pop gave me this shit, but, you know, it's, on, it's, on, it's around. It's around for sure. Yeah, Roly definitely got influence, bro. Because it could be some big money fights that could be made with Roly because he knows how to market himself. He know how to talk. He know how to get the people involved. You know, he need to, he know how to get the casual boxing fans involved. You feel what I mean? So that's probably what they was intending to do. Get him a win over Pitbull so they could line him up with Tiafimo or, you know, with somebody. But the round has started. Sebastian Fandora is walking to Tim Zhu with the, with the jab. Bro, the size difference is insane, bro. Tim Zhu looking up with his chin in the air. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. Bro, they don't even look like they the same weight class. But, uh, but uh, Fandora keeping that jab on him so far, so good. The commentator said he got a built in selfie stick. That's that's like a high key pause slash no ditty, but we're gonna let it rock. But uh, Tim Zoo slipping and countering right now, trying to find him, find his way inside. He's looking for the counter, he's trying to slip his jab and come with the right hand. But Fundora so far is keeping it rangy. Fun, uh, Zoo is, is having a little bit. Of, he's trying to figure his way in right now. He's being consistent with his jab. This is what we want to see from Fundora. So make this a challenge and fight for Tim Zoo. Bro, do y'all see the, 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 the height difference, though? Health as well says Tim Zoo round 10. Wow. What's crazy is the majority of punches that Fandora has has thrown so far has been his jab. Tim Zhu hasn't, hasn't really landed anything clean yet. If I'm in Tim Zhu corner, but I'm, I'm really making it like real, I'm really stressing the jab to the body right now, or the straight shots to the body. You know what I mean? We got to bring them hands down. Tim Zoo just landed. Oh, Tim Zoo just landed a beautiful right hand. But Fundora has to stay focused and continue boxing him. But Fundora, uh, Tim Zoo is already finding his way inside and just landed a shot that snapped Fundora's head back pretty good. Fundora smiled and he's continuing to box. So that's showing the level of focus right there, discipline. But I know there's going to be a point where Fedora is going to go for it, man, in terms of, you know, letting his hands go and shit like that. I can't see him just jamming for 12 rounds. Fedora looking extremely slow, too. Ooh, good left hand from Fedora. That was a that, that wasn't that much of an action packed round at all. That's probably gonna edge the Tim's do considering the fact that he landed a pretty big shot on Fundora. It was like a oh, okay. He pivoted around and shot the right hand up and it snapped his head back. That was the only real big moment in the fight, honestly. So that might be enough to give him the round. For real, for real. We got 25 people in the building, man. Let's hit the like button, man. Let's hit that like button, man. If you appreciate the content, everybody that's new in the building, man, welcome to Mizuma TV. This is something that uh, we get into on the regular, man. I really engage with the people. You know what I mean? We, we have debates on here. I bring people on the platform. You know what I'm saying? We, we're a real open and transparent boxing uh, channel. You know what I'm saying? So if you appreciate the content, man, you want to be a part of Mizuma Nation, y'all welcome to join, man. The subscribers is going up every day. I believe at any point in time, we can hit that 1800 mark, man. So shout out to the nation and the mob for making this possible. We in the round two right now. Fandora is getting right with the jab. 
But another thing I want to uh, point out about what Sebastian Fondor is doing right now, he's being, he's being pretty repetitive with the jab. You know, and what I mean by that is, you know, he's throwing the same jab over and over again. It's usually a single jab, usually a single jab. You know what I mean? Um, if I'm Sebastian Fondor, if I'm in somebody in his camp that's giving him instructions, I'm encouraging him to variate the jab. You feel what I mean? Throw three jabs, throw one jab, throw two jabs. You don't want to give him the same amount any time, every time because somebody um, at a high level like Tim Zoo may be able to pick up on it, make the adjustments necessary, and make you pay. So in all honesty, um, I'm, I'm incorporating some feints in there. You know what I mean? I'm feinting, I'm, I'm throwing away a jab and then shooting another jab on top. You know, feinting a jab and then coming with the real jab behind it. Just giving Tim Zoo different things to look at. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing if I'm Sebastian Fandura. I'm giving them different looks. You want to have a level of unpredictability in there. You never want to let them know your next move. You see what I mean? But so Fandura just let a left hand go, and it seemed like it clipped Tim Zoo a little bit. But Tim Zoo is still on a mission. He's coming forward, trying to find his way in. If I'm Tim Zhu, man, I, I'm definitely um, trying to – take over the the uh the jab session you know what i mean i want to be the one that's using the jab more you know having the better jab and being more successful with the jab and the only way to really do that is to just you know put more volume out there good right hand from tim zoo that looked like that rock fundora a little bit that right hand definitely rock fundora that definitely froze him in his tracks and tim zoo got him against the ropes and he's ripping to the body okay Seems to slow down a little bit, but that right hand. Oh, another big right hand from Tim Zoo. Fandora might be looking like he's gonna okay. That he's on a right Tim Zoo is on a right hand clinic right now. On a big right hand clinic right now. He's definitely catching Fandora's attention. I see I think I see blood coming down Fandora's nose right now. I don't know if that's just the pixels, I don't know exactly what that is, but it looks like there's some blood trickling from Fandora's nose. And Tim Zhu is finding his right hand to the body and the head, which is very dangerous at this point in time because from uh, Tim Zhu got a lot of smoke behind that right hand. It's becoming target practice right now. Fandora has to make some changes. Fandora has to make some changes, man. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. His, his his mouth is his mouth and nose has blood everywhere. Yep, just like I figured. That was that was a bad that was a bad series of right hands that opened that nose up for sure. Oh wait, hold up. Oh wow. Tim Zoo is bleeding on the top of the head profusely, like on the hairline. Where the hell did that come from? Was that a headbutt? Elbow? Oh, man, I got to see the replay on that. I ain't see that. It's not on the face. It doesn't look like it's going to get – it's going to interfere with the eye or anything like that. His cut man is on top of it, so it seems like um, he'll be okay. But that's a weird place to get a, 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 a cut, and it's a pretty deep cut too. That's a pretty deep cut on the top of the head. I would love to know where that came from. There was no replay at all. It was an elbow. Wow. Come on, let's not get a no contest right now. We can't afford that. Oh, the judge, the ref is shaking his head. The ref is shaking his head. Okay, they're allowing him to box. The ref shook his head. I mean, the, the doctor shook his head. He don't seem too optimistic about that cut. So that lets you know the severity of it. It seems like it's pretty deep. Thank God. We don't want to see no no contest. We want to see a legitimate fight. We want to see people win. Oh, from the, uh, Tim Zhu is pissed off. Tim Zhu is pissed off. I think he understands that the doctor isn't liking the cut, so he's going for it. Oh, he's wiping blood. He's wiping blood from his face, man. That cut is really bad, man. 
That cut is really bad. If Fondura is able to get past the fourth round, I think it'll go to the scorecard. So that's what Tim Zhu should be focused on right now. But that blood is coming down his face very bad. Very bad. You can tell it's really bothering his vision. So if I'm Sebastian Fondura, I'm really trying to take advantage of that. Unfortunately. It looks like it's going to be a no contest, y'all. This is a lot of blood. This is a lot of blood, and it's in a spot where I don't think they'll be able to stop the bleeding. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They're getting into it right now. They're getting into it right now. Wow, there's blood everywhere, bro. They both bleeding. Heavy. The nose looks like it's broken off Fundora and the top of Tim Zhu's head is bleeding profusely. It's a lot of blood in that ring right now, man, between the both of them. But Tim Zhu is definitely bleeding the most right now. It's not looking good. Um, from how the way it looks, it looks like it's a cut on his face. But in all honesty, it's the top of the head, and it's just trickling down into his eyes. It's a bad spot, man. I hope that the cut men are able to do something. Fedora is, is letting his hands go, and it's really affecting Tim Zhu's vision right now, man. It's very unfortunate. It looks like the, the ref um, is going to find a way to try to break. I think he's looking for a hole in action. Um, I don't think this fight is going to go past this round, man. I'm going to keep it a 1,000 with y'all, man. This is unfortunate. Um, I think this is going to be a no contest. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I mean, it ain't, my, it ain't my motherfucking fault, but it, it sucks that, you know, this is going on. It sucks that this is going on, you know what I mean? But um, we got to see the replay. We got to find a replay um, that caused this cut. Um, they're speculating that it was an elbow, but I didn't see any visuals, so I'm not sure. Because um, if, if it were in any type of situation a punch, then that's a win on Honduras' part. You know, but I highly doubt that a punch will cause a cut on the top of the head. So most likely it was an elbow or a head, but um, either one of them is an automatic uh, no contest, man. Um, terror, it's a bad round for Zoo. He can't see at all. He can't see at all. They're going to stop this fight, yo. He can't see it at all. The cut man isn't going to be able to do nothing to uh, – where I ain't see that shit. Where is that? Wow, his shit started trickling off the rip. Let's get another look at that. Oh, he ran right into the elbow. He fell into the elbow, though. That wasn't Fundora putting it out there. Fundora, I mean, Zoo shot a shot, fell in, and ran right into Sebastian's elbow, man. Bad freak accident. Freak accident. I hope this, I hope this cut man is able to do some magic and get that bleeding to stop. But that's a bad spot, man. That's a really bad spot. That's a really bad spot, man. I would like to talk to a cut man to see. If that's a... Hold on. Let me text my dad. My dad is a certified cut man. Yeah, he definitely can, man. It's a bad spot, and it just so happens that the spot that is at, um, it's just bound to trickle into the eyes. But you can tell that that cut really uh woke zoo up because now he's punching with completely bad intentions man he's trying to find a way to flip fundora but i agree with tim uh with joe goose's scorecard so far he got a 2-1 um in favor of tim zoo i agree i do think that last round was for fundora uh practically because tim zoo was struggling with his vision you know what i mean and it's looking like much of the same um uh, i think they're gonna it's going to go into the fourth round. So let's say that if they do stop it at the end of this round, it's going to go to the scorecards. Unfortunately, it'll be a technical decision similar to Mikey Garcia and um, I believe it was Orlando Salido. Um, Mikey Garcia was dominating. He had gotten his nose broke with a headbutt, so they went to the scorecards, and Mikey Garcia won a technical decision. So this might be a similar situation to that.
I didn't think they was gonna let it pass this round. But it's it's not a good spot, man. That's a really bad cut. Fuck, man. I hate that that that, that took place. There's blood everywhere, y'all. Everywhere. Yeah, Tim Zook definitely a dog. Because he don't really look like he complaining or nothing. He just want to have the ability to see, just like anybody else. You need your eyes in boxing. You know what I'm saying? Looks like the doctor is standing up watching Zoo. Ooh. Just look like they both throw him, but nobody's landed anything significant yet, like any big bombs. But it looks like a Fedora is cut around the eye as well. So not only is his nose, he bleeding from the nose and mouth, but it looks like he got a cut on his left uh, eyebrow. That's what it's looking like from the camera angle that I'm seeing right now. I'm going to have to wait until they get to the corner. There's 10 seconds left in the fourth round. And uh, they letting their hands go. You know what I mean? They both are some messed up situations right now, but I'm feeling extremely bad for Tim Zoo because it wasn't a punch that caused that. Yeah, this is a bloodbath right here, y'all. Literally, there's blood everywhere on both of these guys. But the difference is, you know, Pandora's blood is coming from actual punishment uh, from Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu shit is the result of an elbow. You see what I'm saying? Is Pandora doing anything? Yeah, he's being active. He's letting his hands go. You know what I mean? Like, he's he, he's being himself. You know, but Tim Zhu is letting his hands go as well. It seems like there's some 50-50 exchanges between the two, but nothing really significant is landing yet. You know, nobody, neither one of them really look affect from, uh, neither one of them really look affected from each other's offense yet. That's what I'm going to say. The, rep, the, the cut man is doing everything he can. I just think that it's a bad spot, bro. Really bad spot. I don't think a cut man could save that. But the doctor is allowing the fight to continue. Maybe it's because they see Tim Zhu having success or he's able to hold his own. So they letting him rock. You know, when Badu Jack got that real bad cut right here um, in the course of fighting Marcus Brown, they allowed him to continue fighting. They allowed Tyson Fury to continue fighting with Otto Wallen. So uh, Otto Wallen, whatever you call him. So there's no reason why they shouldn't let uh, Tim Zhu continue to fight. You know what I'm saying? It's 2-2 two, two so far, according to Joe Goose's scorecard. Do y'all agree with Joe Goose's scorecard? Let me know. He got a 2-2, two, two, so it's a it's a split right now going into the fifth round. And uh, Fandora looks like he's taking advantage of that cut that Tim Zhu has. You know what I mean? It looks like he's taking, a, he's taking advantage of uh, Tim Zhu's inability to see. But uh, Fondora's not really doing anything special. He's not really doing anything special at all. You know, he's just, he's staying active. You know, and he's just, he's picking away at, at Tim Zhu right now. Tim Zhu is just trying to find that money shot. Ooh, good left hook from Tim Zhu. Didn't land completely, but it was almost there. Fondora has to be very aware of Tim Zhu's left hook, man. That's how he got knocked out in his last fight against Mendoza, so. Hopefully, he's bringing that, that uh, lead hand back. Ooh, left hook just cracked Fondora, just as I was saying that. He's throwing nice right hands to the body, Tim Zhu is. And um, he's continuing to march forward. And while he's marching forward, Fondora's just keeping them long, rangy shots on him. So, Fondora's been fighting a real disciplined fight so far. You know, but his defense isn't the best, so he's catching some, some uh, shots in the midst of that. Oh, good left hook. Another left hook. Uh, Tim Zhu is finding his left hook against Fandora, man. I don't think Fandora can afford to take too many of those. He's countering with that left hook now. Oh, another one. That, that left hook bothered Fandora. Fandora seems to be abandoning his game plan. I'm waiting for that moment. It looks like he's starting to. Tim Zhu is starting to land, uh, starting to end all his combinations with the left, left hook, which is extremely smart because I think that he's starting to figure out that that left hook is money right now.
This is a good fight, man. This is a good fight right now. I'm gonna give this round to Tim Zhu. I think Tim Zhu got this round because he landed some pretty solid left hooks. And one of them actually looked like they buckled Fandora a little bit. <laughs> pretty good fight, man. Fandora said he don't got no trouble breathing. So I think that they're under the assumption that he has a broken nose, like I was saying. And um, Tim Zhu is going through it right now, man. They got a whole bunch of sweat rags on them just trying to stop that bleeding. You know, they're trying to put pressure on that cut. It's sad, man. Really sad. <laughs> They speak in a different language, so I can't really tell you what they're saying. Tim is a savage for weathering the storm. I mean, that's that's what it takes, man. Like when you when you fighting at a high level like this, you gotta be you gotta have that 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 mental strength to uh push through some tough times. You know what I'm saying? We not uh, Tim Zoo not on that Victor Ortiz shit where when things get rough, you're looking for a way out type shit. You know what I'm saying? He 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 playing the he playing with the cards that's dealt, and that's part of what makes you a champion. Just just having that uh, resilience to continue moving forward, you know, despite the circumstances. You know what I mean? Uh, Pandora landed like a like a swiping hook, and it caught Tim Zoo pretty clean. But Tim Zoo don't seem affected by Pandora's power. Okay, so me and Joe Goosen on the same tight time with the scorecards. I got Tim Zoo up by one point, so it's currently 48-47 in my book. You know what I'm saying? But that was pretty low. That looked like that was a pretty low blow. It looked like there's some swelling underneath uh, Tim Zoo's right eye now as well. Yeah, I don't think that this circumstance would have happened with Keith Thurman. I'm going to just say that, so... I knew this was going to be a rough fight, but I did not know the elbow would play a part. I don't think anybody would have been able to predict that. A lot of posing right now, a lot of posing. I just hope that this cut isn't wearing away at Tim Zhu's uh, stamina. You know what I mean? Because when you're losing blood like that, it can really wear away at your, your energy. You know what I mean? So I hope that the adrenaline's still there. You know, he's able to, you know, stay stay trucking through, you know, all that blood loss. Ooh, good left hook from Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu is having a lot of... Uh, Having a lot of success offensively with his right hand and his left hook. You know, he's sneaking in little little body shots, straight shots to the body as well. But it just seems like that cut is having a huge uh, effect on him, unfortunately. We currently in the fifth round. It's gonna be a lot of rounds until this fight is over, man. Um, I'm real curious to know how Tim Zhu is gonna be reacting in the later rounds if it gets there. Wow. It's 20 people in the building, man. Hit the like button, man. If you appreciate the content, I'm giving you guys live fight commentary i know there's some people that's at work right now there's people that don't have access to the fight man i'm giving you my breakdowns my analysis my opinions on this fight man so if you appreciate what i'm bringing to you man hit the like button you know what i mean subscribe to the channel oh shit my pop reached back to me yo pop uh let me know man because you because you a cut man uh what do you think about that cut you know is that cut capable of being stopped or is it just a bad location? Tim has 
he said Tim has no head movement, needs his jab in order to get closer. I agree. I agree. Because Fandora is just keeping his shots out there and he's just trying to keep it tall and rangy for the most part. What do you think about the location of the cut? And is it able to be stopped? I think that's a really bad location to get a cut, man. The doctor seems to be intervening. The doctor said he's going to let it go, so that's a good thing. Shout out to the doctor, man, for not interfering. You got to let me know what's up, Pop. Tell me about that cut. Okay, Joe Goosen gave Tim Zoo the last round as well. He got a 58-56. Do y'all agree with 58-56? Shout out to Jay Brumfield. He says, great commentary. I appreciate it, my brother. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, Tim Zoo, you know, he he's like, he he's... Okay. Sebastian is letting his hands go, though, man. He's staying active, and um, he, he's actually trying to use his range. He's trying to use his reach. You could tell that he's actually been uh, working on some things in camp. You know, he probably doesn't want to go through that similar situation that he went through with Brian Mendoza. And I think he's now understanding of, you know, the abilities, the attributes that God gave him. So he's trying to use them to the best of his ability. You know what I mean? But what sucks is that Fandora doesn't really have the legs to know to really get out of range as well. He's still a flat-footed type fighter. You know what I mean? He doesn't have the best upper body movement neither. So it's not like uh, he, he's very limited defensively is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? But, yo, uh, Tim Zhu is bleeding like a motherfucker, man. Bleeding like a motherfucker, bro. Okay. Tim Zoo staying game, bro. You get this showing me a lot about Tim Zoo right now. His character, his will. You know what I mean? And it's really hard to judge his performance as well because this is a circumstance that's pretty rare. And you know, you can tell there's really playing an effect on his performance. So we don't really know how good like Tim Zoo could have possibly been this fight because of this obstacle. You know, a lot of fighters ain't never really been through this. Sims do has to close the gap, man. Um, you can't afford to just keep playing outside of, you know, Fandora's reach. He has to find his way in. It's like he's waiting for Fandora to overcommit. Well, all, all Fandora is doing is just piling up the points from the outside. He has to close the gap, man. He has to close the gap. My pop said that cut is high on his head. It's going to bleed a lot regardless. It shouldn't be bleeding that much. I don't think they're using the right meds. It looks like they had a drawn of adrenaline on them, but I didn't see them use it. And all they're really doing from what I'm seeing is, you know, they apply pressure with the rag. You know what I mean? And, and they just putting a slab of Vaseline on top of his head and calling it a day. But he's bleeding a lot. He, he's losing a lot of blood, man. This might this might play a part in them later rounds, in all honesty. You know, Fandora's going through his own little situation as well, but I'll deal with a bloody nose um, all day over that cut on the top of his head. Look, he's stepping off of the stool, and it's trickling right away. Chris believes Tim is losing. Let's see. There's a video of Oscar and Bernard laughing after hearing Roly got stopped. Damn. I mean, yeah, because I think uh, Roly disrespected Oscar. 
Roley was was talking shit about Oscar when they offered him the Ryan Garcia fight, and you know he said fuck Golden Boy and all that, and he just got stopped. So you know that come with the game. You talk shit and you don't back it up, it could be played against you. Shout out to my boy Lorenzo in the building, man, all the way from Japan. Getting love, Mizuma TV, getting love in Japan, man. I gotta get some Mizuma merch over there, man. Lorenzo, we gotta make that happen, my brother. We gotta get some Mizuma merch over to Japan. You know what I mean, shout out to my boy Lorenzo. But Tim Zoo, he has to find a way to close the gap, man. He needs to be working in close quarters. You know, it's the eighth round right now. And, you know, he's letting Sebastian Pandora get off easy. You know, he needs to utilize his jab more. He got to freeze Pandora and he got to rip some shots in close quarters. You know, playing outside is not really the smart thing to do. Pandora is giving you a tall fighter's approach right now. The long, straight shots, you know, trying to keep his distance to the best of his ability. Uh, Joe Goosen gave Pandora the last round. So, you know, according to Joe Goosen's scorecard so far, it's 67 66 in favor of Tim Zoo, which is an extremely close fight. But we still got the rest of eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We got five rounds left. You know, I understand Tim Zoo's obstacles and, and, and you know, the, the adversity that he's facing right now, but he has to make some changes if he wants to convincingly win this fight because who knows how the judges have it at this point in time. Tim Zhu just landed a really clean right hand up top. Oh, good overhand from Tim Zhu. Another right hand. Tim Zhu landed a series of right hands this round. And Fedora just staying relaxed behind his jab. His jab and his left hand. Good check hook from Tim Zoo. At this point in time, I'm going to keep it a thousand with y'all, y'all. Uh, neither one of them are really showing me who wants it more at this point in time. You know what I mean? This is a close fight. This is a close fight, man. If both of these. In all honesty, both of these guys have to feel the urgency. And one of them has to show who wants it more than the other right now. He have to. He ran right into that elbow, man. If he would have just stood in position, that wouldn't have happened. It's unfortunate. Tim Zoo, a dog for real. Yeah, he definitely is, but. You know, the dog shit, being a dog can only get you so far in, in in the sport of boxing. You know what I mean? Now he needs to use his brain and find ways to close that gap against front door. The better he's able to close that gap, the more he's going to be capable of landing that kill shot. You know what I'm saying? And Fondora is not the type dude, you know, that's going to get easily discouraged by one punch. He has to let his hands go. Unless you got that Brian Mendoza left hook. I don't know, man. He's not going to go away easily. You can knock Fandora out. He's been knocked out before. But you're going to have to earn that. We're currently in the ninth round. Um, 30 seconds into the round. And, ooh. Sam Zoo is finding his left hook. But it's not really having that much of an effect on Fandora where it's like making him hesitant or anything like that. He's still maintaining that same level of focus that he had in the first round. You know what I'm saying? Coming in behind his jab, keeping the jab out there, you know, giving Tim Zoo something to look at. Um, the only thing that I would like to see from Fondora, in all honesty, is a little bit more speed on his punches, man. Um, he's very slow. Hand speed is very slow. He throws a lot of punches. You know, he's throwing some good jabs, but they're very, very slow, man. I would like to see – uh, Fandora pick up the speed if he's able to, unless he's just naturally this slow. Uh, if he were to pick up the speed and with and with the obstacles that Sim Zoo is currently going through with being able, 
I mean, with his vision being impaired right now, I think some speed behind his punches could really, you know, bother Zoo or possibly hurt him. You know, he's having trouble seeing with all the blood in his eyes. So if he gets hit with a shot, he don't see it could possibly hurt him. You know, and like I said, neither one of these dudes are really pulling away with the fight. Um, nobody's really showing that they want it more than the other. It seems like they both content. You know what I mean? It seems like they both content at this point. Nobody really is seeming to feel the urgency right now. I felt like Tim Zhu felt the urgency when he first got cut, but he has slowed down, in my opinion, since then. Well, both of these guys are beat up right now, man, for sure. How do you got this fight scored, yo? Yo, it, that's why I had to ask you because I was under the suspicion that the cut man was terrible. And um, there was another bad cut man yesterday, man. Uh, Sanisa Estrada, she had fought this girl from, uh, I forgot where she was from. It was like Costa Rica or some shit. Her name was like Vaya, Va Vale, Vale or some shit like that. She had a cut and, you know, the cut man was absolutely terrible, bro. And that shit played a role in the fight. That's why having a, a good cut man is very important. You know, there's a lot of arrogant people out here. There's a lot of arrogant people out here that believe that, you know, they're not going to get hit. You know, they're not going to get cut. So they just bring anybody in their corner. You know what I mean? And then, you know, if they run into a head, but, you know, they run into an elbow or just a clean shot that opens them up and they're not able to see. All of a sudden, they're kicking themselves uh, for not having the proper cut man or blaming their corner for not having the proper cut man. You know what I'm saying? It was terrible. I don't think they was wrong for giving him this forgiving from Dora late notice. I just think it's an unfortunate situation. He got cut bad. And I think that is really playing a, a, a part in the fight. And this is still a close fight. You know, it's not like Fondura is blowing him out the water or anything like that. Yeah, you see that? That was another terrible cut, man. Yes, facts. Uh, and when the cut first happened, it took the dude like 30 seconds to get in the ring. You know, you only got a one-minute intermission in between rounds, and he took like 30 seconds, bro. It's currently 85, 86. Okay. Joe Goosen got it. Five rounds to four right now in Fondura's favor, which I agree with. Oh, Coyotes, 197. He said, what's up, man? Hope you're having a good night. Hit the thumbs up. I hope you're having a good night as well, man. Thank you very much. You know what I mean? Shout out to El Coyotes, man. Yeah, Fandora height and reach is tough. Yeah, that, that's a fact. That's what I was saying. That yo, pop, that's what I was saying. They literally just putting Vaseline on it. They just they putting a little bit of pressure with a fucking sweat rag. And and then uh, you know, putting some Vaseline on it and just calling it a day. Bro, they doing him real dirty right now, man. I hope that this really opens Tim Zoo's eyes to, you know, get the proper cut, man. And from what I understand, they be cut man just waiting in the back, you know, waiting to be hired, man. I don't think that this cut should be that bad, bro. Zoo's throwing more body shots. But shout out to Fundora, you know, because we were all under the assumption that he was going to give his height and his reach away. And, you know, he's been fighting a pretty disciplined fight. You know, he's got hit with big shots and he didn't lose focus or just went uh, went for it and, you know, completely abandoned the game plan. You know, he's been keeping his jab out there. He's been keeping his left hand out there. He'll throw a little power shots in between. But for the most part, he's been keeping it nice and rangy. And like my pop said, you know, Tim Zhu has been struggling to get past the jab. You know what I mean? Tim Zoo is in a lot of trouble right now, man. He got three rounds to make something happen. He got three rounds to make something happen, man, because 
It's starting to look like this fight is going in Fondura's favor, and it seems like the momentum is going over to his side. That's just my opinion. You know what I mean? Simzu's going to have to find a way. And I told you guys, I told you guys in one of the latest videos that I made that Sebastian Fondura was more prepared for this opportunity because he was getting ready for a fighter that was similar to Tim Zhu's style. You know what I'm saying? Tim Zhu had to make a complete 180 in camp with 11 to 12 days notice. We're going from Keith Thurman to Sebastian Fondura, who are drastically different fighters. Fondura was more prepared for this moment, man. He had a game plan in place for Boran Chuck or whatever the hell his name, Bo, Boha Chuck or whatever his name is. And, you know, that game plan didn't really need much changing, you know, going into this Tim Zhu fight because they're pretty similar in terms of being coming forward or, or, or orthodox pressure fighters. So Fedora has been ready for this moment. It's kind of funny how people was talking about Tim Zhu was catching Fedora lacking, you know what I mean? But now people are saying that Tim Zhu didn't have enough time for camp. These, both of these guys were in camp ready to go. And when you have in these world-class training camps, you have to be ready for every scenario possible. Uh, boxing greats, I told you. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Big-ass slabs of Vaseline on the top of the head just hoping that the blood stay underneath that Vaseline. That's disgusting, man. Terrible. Terrible. I know those stitches going to hurt after the fight, dog. On the scalp, bro. The scalp a real sensitive area. Oh man. Joe Goosen got it 96 94. So he had Fundora winning the last four rounds. So it sounds like Fundora is pulling out. He's pulling away. He's pulling away on the scorecards. That's what it's looking like. And I told you guys, wouldn't it be funny as shit if Fundora wins? And Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence end up fighting him. That'll be hilarious, bro. I think Tim Zhu should just go for it, man. Listen, you got two rounds to make something happen. I'm making this shit break out, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm making this shit a dog fight. You know, I'm doing everything to make Fandora uncomfortable. And you got to bang with him. That's the situation that it is right now. You're going against a lot of shit right now. You having multiple fights that you're dealing with. But you got to deal with Fondora these next two rounds. So, you know, fuck the box and all that shit. We got we to make this shit crack. We got to get shit popping. Because according to these stats, it says that Fondora is outlanding and outthrowing uh, Tim Zhu throughout the course of these 11 rounds so far. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that's against Tim Zhu right now, bro. If I'm Tim Zhu... We thugging this shit out. Ooh, good right hand. And Tim Zhu is walking in with no jab. No jab at all. I, under, I understand the cut is a concern, but, you know, Pandora's exposing some things about Tim Zhu. Maybe that uh, even Terrence Crawford saw you know what I mean? He has trouble with a good jab. And Terrence Crawford's favorite stance is the southpaw stance. He has a hell of a jab on him, too. We've seen it with Earl. So. Who knows how this scorecards look, man. But it looks like Fondura is pulling away with it, man. He, he's had the most disciplined game plan so far. And, um. You got a pretty solid game plan, bro. Pretty solid game plan. Shout out to Fundura and his team. So far, so good for him, though. There's 10 seconds left in the 11th round. It seems like everybody's prediction is out the window, man, because it's looking like Fundura by unanimous decision so far. I mean, we got a whole nother round to decide that, though. So Pandora's team just gave you the game plan right there. Keep it simple. Jabs, 
One twos. That's it right there, man. Yeah, man. My pop is right. That's right. Tim Zoo needs a knockout. Wow. Sebastian Fundora might be three minutes away from becoming the unified world champion at Super Welterweight, y'all. From a knockout loss to unified Super Welterweight champion of the world. That's insane, bro. I wonder if Tim Zoo feels the urgency because he definitely letting his hands go. Oh. Oh. From Nora, man, he had to have thrown at least a thousand punches this fight, bro. I want to see the total punches that the Fundora threw because he's been nonstop jabbed at one twos the entire time. And I'll tell you what, um, if Sebastian Fundora gets some type of mobility about him, or you know, you know, get some some sharp, responsible defense behind them, straight one twos like that, bro, he's gonna give a lot of people some trouble, man. Um, this is a completely different style than what I've seen uh, Fundora do in his previous fights. And um, I'm happy that I see him actually using the tools that God gave him. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty dope to see. But Tim Zoo definitely needs a knockout. You know, he's still running into straight shots, and there's a minute left. It doesn't seem like it's going pretty good for Tim Zoo, man. I know Tim Zoo was the favorite. Um, but shout out to Sebastian Fundora coming in on 11 to 12 days notice. And, uh, you know, outclassing the man of the division in Tim Zoo. You know what I mean? Because since Jamel Charlo has been MIA, Tim Zoo has been like the, the, the front of the division, the man of the division. And, you know, Sebastian Fondora took the challenge on 11 to 12 days notice and uh, took on the situation gladly, prepared properly. And there's 20 seconds left, and it seems like Fandora is just walking away with this one. You know, there's no urgency on Tim Zhu's side. He's fighting at the wrong distance. He's not keeping his – he he's not using his jab at all. You know, he was he, he went about this the complete wrong way, man. It's going to be very interesting to see how these scorecards go. Because we might have a new, uni, uh, new unified super welterweight champion of the world it's Sebastian Fundora, man. I don't think they could take this away from him in all honesty. There's blood everywhere. That's crazy, bro. Look at look at the tape. Look at the tape on Sebastian Fundora gloves. It looks like the tape is red, naturally. <laughs> the tape is white. Crazy, bro. That was a lot of blood loss. Look at Sebastian Fundora's back, the back of his arms. Insane, bro. Uh... Tim Zoo need to uh, fire his uh, cut man. He need to fire his cut man immediately. Fandora threw a total of 721 punches. I swore he had a thousand. 
My pop says from Dora by UD. I think that's a good call, Pop. Bring it up. But you already know what the excuse is going to be. If Fundura comes out on top, man, they're going to say that Tim Zoo lost because of that cut. He wasn't able to focus because of the cut. Everything is going to be surrounded around the cut, man. I'm telling you. Let's see how these scorecards come out. 7 5 Fundura, you got it 115, 113. All right, let's hear Jimmy Lennon. Split decision, y'all. I think this is a draw. Eight four to M Zoo. Steve Weisfeld sees it one hundred sixteen, one hundred twelve. This is a draw, y'all. This is a draw. Oh no, seven five, seven five. Sebastian Fundora gets the victory and is the new unified super welterweight champion of the world. Congratulations to Sebastian Fundora. You proved me wrong, my brother. You did the exact opposite of what I thought you was going to do. Um, you boxed tall. You, you kept them behind your shots. You let your jab go. Um, you did a phenomenal job, man. So you the new WBO and a new WBC champion. Good sportsmanship between Zoo and Fundora. And that just lines Sebastian Fundora up with some big money fights, man. Some big money fights. For sure. Because now Sebastian Fundora has the opportunity to face Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford uh, setting himself up to be the WBO mandatory. Um, and Earl Spence, you know, being with the PBC, you know, they under the same network. He could get that straight shot to the uh, opportunity to be unified champion against Sebastian Fundora. So Sebastian Fundora about to run into some money, y'all. Let's hear what Tim Zhu got to say. There was a lot of hope in your corner group that you could actually stay in box. The blood obviously was hindering your sight, but you could still contact him. Was there any point where you said, I still got what it takes? I mean, a judge had to win. Yeah, you know what? Uh, the momentum was rolling. That's really hard in the first. First two rounds, first two rounds, and then boom, you're off your blind completely. So, look, this is boxing, it's part of the sport, and this thing happens. Uh, congratulations, Fondora, he's the, he's the new king at the world before. After this outstanding performance, it's largest of the kind, you still get going. What is next for you? Oh, look, we're going back to the back. We're going to show it up. Um, I'll show it up still, no matter what. Uh, and I always bring the flag, so you know. You know what? Uh, I'll give a long way, no excuses, but uh, you know what? I'll, I'll fight whoever, whenever. Big big expenses here, I'll fight him as well. Even Tim and Stalker, man. Y'all want a good group scrap? You know who to call. We're absolutely sure. Tim's new letting you know he's still with the smoke, yo. Thank you, Father. But like I said, man, you know, Tim's new letting you know he's still with the smoke, yo. Thank you, Father. But like I said, man, Sebastian Fundura completely proved me wrong, yo. Uh, like I told you, the last one, we've been praying for this moment a long time. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy that Tinksu gave me uh, uh, the opportunity, and my opportunity came to dream come true. There was a lot of blood in this fight. It was probably one of the bloodiest I've seen in boxing. How did you push through that? Your nose was stripping that entire time. What was going through your mind? You know, the third round, I was like, damn, I didn't want to bleed my nose today. But, you know, uh, my dad said it to, to our, our cut man. We've been bleeding our whole life, you know. We said, boss, we're going to get hurt. And, and, and we just got to be smart. And again, I've been telling everybody this whole camp. Wow. I'm going to use my brain. I'm going to use my brain. I hope you guys saw me use my boxing suit today. And you enjoyed it. And Tim Zoo is a world class fighter. 
He, he came, he did not give up, even though that accidental uh, elbow to the head happened. He kept coming. Were you surprised about all of this toughness and how the fight kept going? Of course, of course. He's a world class fighter. He's a world champion for a reason. Uh, the way I put my belt, it's an honor to, to share the ring and, and make history with him. And your sister Gabby is here tonight as well. She's a world champion. This the and brother, world champions, man. Shout out to their parents, dog. They doing something right over there. First brother sister duo to win world titles. That's dope. That's dope, man. Now, you know, people always want to know what's next. You're celebrating being unified champion. You know what's next. Behind me, right here, who is interested in fighting. Uh oh, who that? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> You said you would Yo, man, get your ass up out of there, man. Ah. The Earl sizing him up. <laughs> he looking him up and down. Well, maybe we'll see it this year. Thank you guys both. It's Sebastian. Congratulations. Earl in the ring. That nigga about to finesse the fight from Terrence Crawford, man. Yo, man. Hold on, man. I'm about to text Bowman. I'm about to text Bowman. Come on, Earl. You don't deserve that. Keep it a thousand, man. Wow. He about to take that fight from Bud. I just text. I just. I just text Bull It's Crazy. Unfortunate. It was really unfortunate. Like you said, he had momentum going. Damn. Earl, slick motherfucker, boy. God damn. Shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah, y'all see it. You know, I should have figured that. He said he was headed to Vegas and that he wanted the winner. Damn. Oh shit, Crawford said something. I just text Bowman about it. I'm trying to see if Bowman can write me back. He probably not gonna respond though. Let me check. Let me check Twitter. <laughs> First thing that popped up on my timeline. <laughs> Bud put the eye emoji. Four minutes ago. Let's look at the series of tweets from Bud. He put the eye emojis. He said, you lost, sir. He said, you lost, sir. You got to work your way back up. Sorry, buddy. You got to wait in line, sir. <laughs> he said, nigga, you look like a linebacker, my guy. That is fucking hilarious. That's fucking hilarious, bro. I'm glad he said something. Because it's clear what uh, Earl Spence is doing, man. He's trying to take the opportunity away from uh, Terrence Crawford. You know what I mean? I think Terrence Crawford is definitely more deserving than Earl Spence at this moment. Is this still a good fight? Sure. You know what I mean? But I think all roads... I think all roads, you know, lead the butt at the end of the day anyway, because let's say it's a situation where Earl Spence does uh, defeat Sebastian Fundora or he does get the fight. You know what I mean? Um, he's going to have to fight Bud anyway. You know what I mean? So all roads lead the butt at 154 pounds if you have the WBO world title. So, you know, Earl Spence might find his way in. They're probably going to fight at the end of the summer, the middle of summer, whatever the situation may be. 
you know, let's say Earl Spence gets the victory over Fandura. Uh, they're going to mandate Arrow to fight Bud right away, which is maybe what Earl Spence wants anyway because he let it be known that he wants to rematch against Terrence Crawford at 154 pounds. So what better way to do it to, than bringing two titles into the picture? You know what I mean? That's crazy, bro. That's fucking nuts. Earl, slick motherfucker, boy. Earl know exactly what he's doing. He's not deserving of that at all. But considering the fact that they all under the PBC banner, he got the shortcut. He got the shortcut, man. And, you know, PBC historically don't fuck with Bud. Keep it a buck. You know, PBC don't fuck with Bud. But, like, let's, let's really talk about it. Like, um, Showtime and PBC didn't want to pay Bud for the Earl Spence fight. They thought that he was being too hard to negotiate with. Do y'all remember that? Showtime wanted Keith Thurman versus Earl Spence. Earl Spence was the one that was like, no, nah, I'm not fighting Keith Thurman. This is the only fight that I want, so make it happen. So he forced them people hand to make that Terrence Crawford fight happen, which is why Terrence Crawford, after the fight, he thanked Earl because he said, without Earl, this fight would have never have happened. You know what I'm saying? So PBC, you know, Al Heyman, whoever the person may be, you know, they feel like Bud don't bring much to the table or he may be too much of a risk for their fighters, which is why they was holding back on making that fight happen. They feel like Bud was asking for too much. He was asking for more than what he was worth. All that shit. You know what I mean? So they probably going to give him a tough time with this one as well, which is why Tim Zoo manager was talking about, and he's aware of it too, because that's why they were talking about, yo, we might vacate the WBO belt to go fight Arrow. Because when you fight Earl, it's still a good payday. You know, this might be a damaged version of Earl. You know, if you beat, he's an he's a easier fight to take at this moment. You know, Earl is more vulnerable to Terrence Crawford at this moment. So it may be an easier win at this point in time. So they'll vacate this belt to go get a bag and beat up on a battered Earl and then meet Crawford later on for possibly more money. That's just how they think it from a business perspective. You feel what I'm saying? So that, that's what's going on right now, man. It's unfortunate that, you know, you know, Terrence Crawford could really show that he's the best in the world. You know, he could defy all the odds. You know, everything that was set against him, he comes out on top. You know, he dominates Earl. And then he's looking to do more historical shit. You know, Canelo don't want to look his way. He's talking about he ain't going to get nothing out of that. So now he's looking for the next best option. Um, he was under the assumption that Tim Zhu was going to win, which is why he was talking to Tim Zhu manager. Tim Zhu comes up short and loses to Sebastian Fondora, y'all. You cannot make this shit up, man. And that's why I said Tim Zhu's manager was completely wrong, completely wrong for trying to make a fight behind the scenes with Terrence Crawford when you had Sebastian Fondora in front of you. And I told y'all that Sebastian Fondora was more ready. He was more prepared. You know what I'm saying? There was people saying, oh, Sebastian Fundora, oh, he's catching Fundora last minute, man. Uh, Fundora is not ready for Tim Zhu right now. He just came off of a knockout loss. Bro, he was fighting on the undercard against the dude that just beat the shit out of Brian Mendoza, Bohachuk. He was locked in. He was ready to go. He had the game plan set in place. You know, they switched a whole shit up, bro. He went from being an inside, close-range fighter to keeping him outside. Bop, 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 bop. You know, throw a hook here and there, keep his range. Fuck, bro. It's crazy, bro. Go check out that video that I made, man. I'm trying to tell y'all. That's why we don't underestimate nobody in boxing. Don't talk about no other people you can make a possible fight with until you get rid of the person that's in front of you. Boxing one-on-one. -on -one. Boxing one-on-one. -on -one. Look, I made this video and it didn't even get, the, bro, it didn't even get 100 views, bro. This shit got 69 views, bro. And look, look at look, look, look at the truth that I put out there, bro. Sebastian Fundura may have ultimate advantage versus Tim Zoo, and why it may be an upset in the making. Just listen to your boy, man. Just listen to your boy. And out of all the videos that I made, that was the least viewed one. And it came to reality. Ain't that some shit? 
Boxing film says, focus on your fight, like what Buzz said. Yeah, focus to your fight. Focus on your fight before you not make it to your fight. Facts. And that's exactly what happened. And it wasn't even Tim Zhu. It was Tim Zhu manager. Tim Zhu manager was overly confident in believing that Tim Zhu was just going to dispose of Fundora and was already talking to Bud. What you talking to Bud for? It ain't guaranteed that you're going to be Fundora. Nothing is guaranteed in boxing. Nothing. Nothing. You feel me? Just look at the, you can't underestimate nobody, bro. I've been in this game a long time. I, 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 I do this, bro. Like, I've seen shit happen. I remember being so confident about shit and then shit going the complete opposite of what I thought. And it's humbling. Boxing humbles you. Hump it. Well, well, Mike Tyson told Andre Berto. I remember I seen an interview from Andre Berto. Andre Berto said Mike Tyson sat him down and told him that boxing going to break your heart every time. I understand exactly what he's talking about, bro. Boxing them broke my heart. I don't know how many fucking times, bro. I done had close, close relationships with pros and then see them get stopped. And that shit is heartbreaking, man. You could devote yourself to a whole camp and then it completely just, shit just completely hit the fan. You build all this confidence throughout training camp. You working your ass off, everything clicking, and then you just come up short. It's heartbreaking, man. You know what I mean? And from there, you start to really humble yourself, really analyze shit, and then you got to take into consideration, bro, I got to take everybody serious. Everybody got to be taken serious, bro. If they're in the ring with you and they got those small-ass gloves on, regardless of, you know, you feel like they're more skilled than you, they're not as skilled as you, whatever, they could hurt you, bro. Whether the nigga 11 and 0 or 0 and 11, that man could clip you and fuck your career up or possibly fuck your life up because boxing is that serious. People lose their life in there. You know what I mean? So I hope that was a humbling experience for Tim Zoo manager. You know what I mean? Stop counting your chickens before they hatch, my nigga. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna be, you might be surprised with what you end up with. Like right now. Like right now. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Shout out to Sebastian Fundura. He earned that. He earned that. Now Terrence Carver got worried about Earl taking his opportunity. Earl bad as shit up there with Briggs talking about, oh, yeah, man, you're, you're fighting the big dog now. Bro, you lost your last fight. You know who the big dog is, nigga. The nigga who whooped your ass. That's who the big dog. <laughs> Keep it a thousand. But, you know, Earl just being a businessman, dog. He understands that he get he, he sees that he could possibly beat Fundora, which we're not sure of. Let's not make assumptions again, because we don't know what Earl is gonna be on the table going up against the bench of Fundora if that fight even is made. You know what I mean? Because Crawford might find his way in. You know, he might find his way to finesse himself in that situation. But regardless, what the fuck? What I'm trying to say is. We don't know what version of Earl going to be in front of Fundora, right? We don't know. Shit. Bud might have took all the fight out Earl. And Fundora might steamroll him. EJ Fish on the fence at my grandpa's house. What you talking about, man? You serious or you joking? No, nah, but what I'm trying to say is, bro, it's crazy how this boxing shit work. Surprise you every time. I don't know anybody that got a 100% prediction ratio in boxing. It's impossible. You know, I thought Tim Zoo was going to have Fundora in the scope. I thought he was going to get him up out of there. You know what I mean? Turns out he fought a totally different fight than what we've seen him fight before. And essentially, he outboxed Tim Zoo. Boxing film says fight boots then. Uh, you, you know they ain't fighting boots, my brother. Come on, man. Tim Zoo got some type of promotional issues. Uh. 
you know, they talking about that Castillo Clayton about to be as mandatory. That might go to a purse bid. You know, he ain't about to lose that title. He gonna fill his. He gonna do his. Uh, he going to do his his obligations as a world champion and face his mandatories and shit like that. Oh, uh, but let's let's check in on Oscar De La Hoya, man. My pop just sent me this clip, man. Shout out to my dad, Lando Rosa. Let, let's see what uh, Oscar De La Hoya's reaction is um, with Roley being stopped by Pitbull. <laughs> Yo! Wow. <laughs> hop <Beehive>, Dicky. <yeah. laughs> Yo. De La Hoya wrote in the cash, and we just heard Rollies got stopped by a Chihuahua. Yo, ask a petty for that, bro. Yo, you know what, bro? Listen, I, I know this might be like a, you know, Something that y'all not gonna be on with me with, but I've been fucking with Oscar lately, dog. You know, you know, Oscar got some fucked up tendencies. He a kinky ass nigga. He a weirdo. Whatever situation may be, that all may be true. But how the way he been moving lately, we're like, man, fuck it. That's just who I am. Bro, I rock with that shit, bro. I don't know why. Like somebody was like, somebody commented on his Instagram. Um, he had this some kinky shit. I think like he was ironing clothes, butt ass naked or something. He was doing some weird shit like that. Unfortunately, it came up on my timeline. <laughs> and um, they were like, oh, he back on that coke again. He was like, nah. He was like, nah, that's boring now. He said some shit like that. I was like, what the fuck? Like he just, he's so okay with his past and what he was doing and, and all that type shit, bro. He just being the real him now. Because you know, when Oscar was coming up in the game, bro, he was faking who he really was. He was being like that nice guy, you know, playing behind that nice guy club, you know, the the, the smile and all that shit, you know, the pretty boy image. And, uh, you know, it turned out that this man was the complete opposite behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? So to see him out here and he's just being himself and all that, bro, that's hilarious. Let's check this out one more time. Beehive, petty as shit for that one. Nah, because Roly was saying fuck Oscar, fuck Golden Boy, and all that shit. And we was all laughing at Oscar for that. It's crazy how that shit works. It's crazy how that shit works. Crazy how that shit works, bro. Uh, Mizuma TV clip says, who you favoring, Haney or Pitbull? Oh, man, you, you. I feel like that's low key, like a that's an obvious answer, man. I think you know Isaac Cruz. You know he had a good performance. You know he stopped Roley, but he stopped Roley because stylistically that fight just played out in his favor. You know what I mean? Now Devin Haney is a totally different task than Roley Romero, man. You know Devin Haney uh, is extremely intelligent in the ring, got a good jab. You know has great mobility, could box his ass off. You know he's an accurate puncher as well. Um, I just think that. Isaac Cruz will have a tough time, you know, landing those big shots on Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? I have, I see him having a hard time closing the gap against Devin Haney. Devin Haney being in great shape, too. You know, he had a great performance in his last fight against Regis Pro Gray. You know, he passed in flying colors, and this was a two-time champion at 140 pounds. You see what I mean? Isaac Cruz is undersized for the 140-pound division, so maybe if Devin Haney was a sit and duck, you know, and, and you know, was defensively irresponsible like Roley Romero, then you know, Devin might be in trouble, but that's not the case at all, man. Devin Haney is, you know, slick, you know, pretty he, he's a master of distance. He has one of the best jabs in the sport of boxing. I think that he'll just be I think he'll just be boxing and turning Isaac Cruz for 12 rounds and, and get a shutout on the scorecards, man. I think that that'll be a boxing. You know, lesson. You know, I think that he'll take him to school. That's just my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Will he be able to hurt Pitbull? Absolutely not. I don't think so. I don't think he'll hurt Pitbull at all. You know, I just think that it'll be looking like Isaac Cruz shadow boxing. I think that Isaac Cruz will be shadow boxing for 12 rounds. I think he'll be hitting nothing but air, you know, and, you know, Devin Haney just going to have, just be toying with him. I think it's going to be an easy sparring session. 
You know what I'm saying? So that, that's what I think. Anonymous said, check the Roly scorecard too. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, let's check that out. Let's check that out. Shout out to my boy Anonymous for dropping this scorecard. And this scorecard was, let's see, Max DeLuca, Chris Flores, and Patricia Jarman. Okay, so let's check this out. So one of the judges had it 69-63 in favor of Isaac Cruz until the stoppage. One of the judges, Chris Flores, wow, had a 66-65 in Roley's favor prior to the stoppage. And then the other judge had it 68-64 in favor of Isaac Cruz. Wow. So in all honesty, you know, he had the one point for holding and shit like that. So the judge really had Roley up. A whole round. How? The dude gave Roly second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth round? Really? One, two, three, four, five. He gave Roly five rounds in a row, bro. That's disgusting, bro. Absolutely disgusting. See, like judges like that, they need to be analyzed, bro. They need to be interrogated. They need to be investigated. That's disgusting, bro. That's crazy that you know they actually released that card and made it seem like it was cool. That's that's crazy, bro. Man, I'm glad I'm glad Pitbull stopped him. I'm glad Pitbull stopped him. See, this is the corrupt shit that just try to find his way back in boxing over and over again. We we see it disappear for a little bit, so we think everything is cool, then it come back at, at the worst times possible. You know what I mean? It would have been sad to see that fight get taken away from Isaac Cruz when he essentially dominated that fight. You know, he beat Roly ass, bro. Keep it a thousand. You know what I mean? So that's that. And speaking of Mayweather promotions, man, uh, shout out to Nate Jones, man. I don't know if y'all know who Nate Jones is. Um, he had stopped by the gym. He had a fighter that was coming through and sparring at Pivot Boxing Academy yesterday. You know, I didn't get to really introduce myself or anything like that to Nate Jones, but, you know, he was in there. He was talking to everybody, you know, being pretty cool. And I ain't going to say too much, but, you know. Mayweather promotion is pretty shaky, baby. I'm going to just say that. I'm going to just say that. Shout out to Nate Jones, man. He was a big part of uh, Floyd Mayweather's training camps and stuff like that. He was the big dude that had the body shield while Floyd Mayweather would punch and shit like that. Uh, it was a close friend of Floyd Mayweather's for many years. So shout out to Nate Jones for being in the building and, you know, showing love to Pivot Boxing Academy. You know what I'm saying? So it was a it was a pretty good night of boxing, man. Pretty good night of boxing. Boha Chuck beat the dog shit out of Mendoza. Kermel Moten had a tough competitor, man, but, you know, passed with flying colors, man. Um, that kid is definitely – looking to be something special or is being molded into something special at this current moment, man. I got to find a way to bring him on the channel, bro. I got to find a way. You know what I'm saying? Um, Equip FC, the tall, lanky dude won, man. Sebastian Fundora defeated Tim Zhu by unanimous. No, split decision, actually. One of the judges had Tim Zhu up 8-4. Um, I disagree with that totally. You know what I mean? But the wrong, the right man won at the end of the night, so I guess that's what matters. That's the optimistic point of view i guess um but you know great night of boxing great night of boxing boha chuck beat mendoza and that was a pretty uh good fight um you know julio cesar martinez i believe i don't know did he win i believe he won you know and that was a good fight with cordova he put on a good effort 
you know, it was actually out boxing Julio Cesar Martinez um, at certain points during the fight. Uh, Miles Jordan said he had a seven five Tim. Ooh, okay. I thought I thought I thought Fandora pulled out those later rounds, like the last few of those later rounds, the last four rounds, and I think that's what made him, you know, get away with the W. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know who else? Eris Landy, Laura knocked. Uh, uh, what's this dude name? Mike Zarafa, the fuck out, bro. This was a bad night for uh, this was a bad weekend for Australian boxing. You know what I mean? Uh, just that that was this was a bad weekend for for Australians, bro. I'm gonna just say that. That's a that's a real unfortunate situation. Uh, Mike Zarafa, you know, overcommitted on a shot and made yo. Hold on. Let me see if I can find a clip. Let me see if I can find a clip. I need a ringside view so they won't, you know, copyright me or anything like that. Oh, they don't show it. They ain't showing it. Damn. No, nah, so Mike Zarafa overcommitted with a jab. Ares Landy Laura pulled and shot a one-two. The left hand hit him right on the button, man. Right at the uh right on the jaw. And his lights went out, man. Like he was conscious, but you know, he was he was gone. He was definitely gone. He had actually beat the count, and uh, but his legs were gone. So the ref did the right thing and stopping the fight. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations to Ares Landy Laura. I love the adjustment he made as he got older, man. You know, when he was younger in his early 30s, he showcased more mobility, was more slick, was pretty much on cruise control, will outbox you. But it seems like as he's gotten older, Ares Landy Laura is currently 40 years old. Um, he's become more flat footed, you know, sitting down on his punches more and just developed like this sniper mentality, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, He's not throwing many punches, but every punch that he's throwing has laser-like precision on it. And if he catches you clean from what I've been seeing, um, he's knocking you out. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 he's having some dynamite in them hands. So I'm looking forward to seeing Erzlandi Lara fight Danny Garcia this year. You know, Danny Garcia was in the building. I believe he was spectating strictly for Erzlandi Lara. So expect that fight to happen. Expe expect that fight to happen. You know what I mean? And I, I think May 4th will be a good date for it. You know, Laura didn't take any punishment. You know what I'm saying? Why not get back in the mix? Or maybe on Gerontae Davis's undercard. Like I said, Arizlandi Laura versus Danny Garcia on Frank Martin and Gervonta Davis's undercard. Why not? Why not? That'd be a good fight, man. That'd be a really good fight. And uh, shout out to Karan Davis, man. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the Elijah Garcia fight. That'd have been a great fight tonight. But they said Elijah Garcia had gotten sick. So hopefully, you know, and it sucks. They did a full training camp and they didn't get nothing out of it, unfortunately, in terms of like, you know, becoming victorious or, you know, all that good stuff or getting that uh, attention on pay-per-view. You know what I mean? But hopefully they postpone it because it's still a great opportunity for Karan Davis to showcase his talent and um, he can show who he is. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, back to Ares Landy Laura, man, that, that knockout was sensational, bro. Um, I just love the change that he's made. You know, he's not still trying to be doing all that moving around. He's going to take this flat-footed approach, trust his defense, and if you, you know, and he's he's watching you. He's watching every mistake you make. And once he picks up on the tendency and he lines you up in that scope, you better hope that, you know, that shit, <laughs> you better hope that shit not lined up correctly. Because if it is, you getting put out. You know, Ares Landy Lara had a hell of a knockout against somebody that you know I see in Philly all the time. And Thomas Lamana, uh, you know Spike O'Sullivan, he stopped as well, and now he just stopped Mike Zarafa, which I believe was his mandatory. I think so. Uh, Ares Landy Lara had probably definitely had. One of the knockouts of the night, if not the knockout of the night. Um, 
Now we're getting into Roly Romero versus Pitbull Cruz, man. I told you guys, I trust Isaac Cruz more than Roly Romero because he has some sort of defensive responsibility. And that's really what it came down to because Roly Romero was letting shots go, but none of them were really laying the clean on Isaac Cruz. You know what I mean? Isaac Cruz kept his high guard nice and tight. He didn't allow any shots to like really uh, get in between it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Roly Romero with the same tendencies, man. People thought because he went back with his old trainer, Ismael Salas, that, you know, they was like, oh, he's working on his defense. Oh, he's working on his defense. He's going to clip Pitbull. Okay. Okay. If you think so. Okay. You know what I mean? And, you know, Roly Romero went the right back to who he was, you know, uh, throwing his punches and, and dropping his, his right hand. You know, Isaac Cruz lands a left hook. And that was and that was the beginning of the end. You know, he lost his legs. He gained he gained his legs back in the later rounds. But you know, he ends up getting hurt again with a series of punches. Uh, Roly Romero was trying to fight him off, was trying to outbox him, but he just didn't have like he has the idea of how to box, but he doesn't have it set in stone. It's not a solidified skill. You know what I'm saying? And I've been telling y'all, like boxing film just said right here. Ever since Roly got knocked out by Javante Davis. He has been questioning himself mentally. He's been trying to psych himself out with the mind games, with the trash talking and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, bro, Tank changed his perception on his ability to take a punch. And I knew that directly during the Ismael Barroso fight. You know, all of a sudden he wants to be this mover and boxer. And, you know, he doesn't want to overcommit to a shot because he might get countered. And when he gets hit clean, he gets knocked down. Um, in preparation for Ismael Barroso, he gets knocked out with 16 to 18 ounce gloves on his sparring against Joan Ingram, who's a prospect. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason why this guy should be clipping you and stopping you with sparring. Now you go in there with the pressure fighter, power puncher like Isaac Cruz, who's a little rough, aggressive motherfucker. You try to box him like how you did against Barroso, and at Barroso, it didn't work. But somehow in your head, you thought it was going to work against Isaac. You know, Isaac Cruz. Wasn't phased by your punching power or anything like that. And every time he hits you clean, he hurt you. Um, you wasn't worried. Oh, Brian. Uh oh, check this out. Shout out to Bo Mac McIntyre, man. He actually responded to my text. He kept it short and sweet, man. I ain't gonna bother him. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> he said. So this is strictly from Bo Mac, man. He says, no worries. <laughs> I said, y'all see Earl trying to take this fight from your boy Bud? Shaking my fucking head. He said, no worries. <laughs> so, you know, Bo Mac keeping it short and sweet, man. Shout out to Bo Mac. That's the first message I ever sent him, by the way. You know, I've been respecting uh, his privacy and shit like that. You know what I mean? But yeah, man. He said how I got his number. I got an interview with him, my brother. I don't know if you're new to the channel or that new to the channel, but I did. I did a. I did an interview with Bo Mac, and we exchanged information after that. So that's my guy. I fuck with Bo Mac. I mean, he he was my first big interview on this channel, and I haven't really done no interview since then. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm just trying to be more about quality at this point. I want to get the best people possible. So if I gotta wait to do so, then fuck it. It is what it is. <laughs> Blitz is in the building. He said, Pandora won. Tim Zoo lost. Tim Zoo got beat up. All the European colonizers are so mad right now. Thank you, Pandora, for delivering justice for us indigenous Australians. Oh, that's a little bit personal over there, my brother. Damn. Damn. Okay. That's a little deep. Pause. No ditty. That's a little deep.
damn. But anyways, like like I was saying, man, Bomag interrupted me, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, Roly Romero, you know, I told you guys that, that he was training with Ismael Barroso, and you and you seen that he was working on defense. Bro, it's going to take more than one training camp to fix uh, the mistakes that Roly Romero has been making in terms of, you know, bringing his hands back and just defensive flaws. It's going to take more than one training camp to do that. And, you know, Isaac Cruz isn't the type of fighter to be working on shit with anyway. You know, Roly Romero should have just uh, – I think he was fucked either way. I just think stylistically um, it was all wrong for him, whether he was with, you know, Coach Bullet or Ismael Salas. You know what I'm saying? I just think that it's a bad style matchup. And sometimes it's just the cookie crumble that way, man. Like, there's just some people that you're going to have a difficult time beating. And I think that um, with Rolly Romero's uh, decline and punch resistance and, you know, Isaac Cruz throwing nothing but bombs and, you know, Rolly Romero being defensively irresponsible, I just thought it was a matter of time before Isaac got him. So, you know... Something that I didn't really expect to happen um, has happened. And I didn't really take it into consideration, even though I thought Isaac was going to win. But now Isaac Cruz is a world champion at 140 pounds. So now he's in the toughest, the deepest division in boxing. But he has a world title. So you already know there's a fucking target on Isaac Cruz back right now. Because if we compare him to the other champions in the division... Um, uh, he's the weakest link, bro. I'm gonna keep it a thousand, bro. Um, I think that him versus Tiafimo Lopez would be very interesting. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, man, he may be the weakest link. Do y'all think Isaac Cruz is the weakest link out of the champions at 140 right now? Let's let's go over it. Tiafimo Lopez, Devin Haney, Subriel Matias, Isaac Cruz. Is he the weakest link at 140 pounds? Y'all let me know, man. We about to be three hours in, and I'm rocking with y'all. Ralph says yes. Boxer Film says yes. Anonymous says yes. So it seems like so far, Silk's Bando says Pitbull and Matias about the same. Really? Based off what? Based off what? Go says yes. Him and Tio. Sounds like Silk's has a different outlook on things he measures him and matias on the same level that's interesting like not proven okay okay matias fought the motherfuckers that he needed to fight to become world champion y'all say the same shit about boost bro who did boost fight who did boost fight he fought everybody he needed to fight and, and and, and, you know, he did everything he needed to do to get a belt around his waist. You know what I mean? Um, Boots has been calling out people tirelessly to fight. They don't want to fight him. Subro Matias fucking speaking English, calling people out and calling them all types of pussies and shit, and they still won't fight him. So what the fuck is he supposed to do? Take the opportunities that's in front of him. Simple and plain. Simple and plain. That's all he's doing. And I'm and I'm gonna commend them for that. You know, if they don't want to give you this opportunity because you high risk, low reward, then you gotta you gotta uh you gotta play the cards that's dope. Keep beating the people that's in front of you, and, uh, and eventually that opportunity gonna present itself. That's all you can do. Yeah, Ralph, that's a fact. So that's a fact, Ralph. You can't give fights if people aren't willing to get in there with you. You can't force people to fight them. It takes two to make a fight. That's a fact. That's the excuse once he loses, he's flat footed. Okay. Yeah, I see it. I got to see it. Sad thing is, I feel like Cruz will be the first one to fight Matias, even though he just got the 140. Well, when they asked Isaac Cruz who he won next, he said Tio, Haney, Gervonta. Matias wasn't on that list. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's scared of Matias or he won't fight him.
but he's he's telling you who's on his mind. And Matias doesn't seem to be that person right now. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely not. You know, him speaking English doesn't make him intimidate. And what I'm saying is they got him speaking English to he he's going, he's going as far as to speak English to call people out to fight him. I never I never associated him speaking English with being intimidating. You you putting words in my mouth. You interpreting shit that I you, you like pulling shit out of statements that you know that I'm not saying. What I'm saying is the motherfucker is speaking English, calling people out to fight. You know what I'm saying? And Devin Henry even acknowledged that Matias um, is avoided at the 140-pound division. Let's look back at Devin Haney's statement. Let's look back at his statement. Let's go to Michael Benson. <clears throat> I put, I'll be trying to spell Michael, and I always spell my son name, Micah. Funny. But uh, let's go back to Devin Haney's statement. And shout out to Zordo. He just became the WBA cruiserweight world champion. So that man is a what? Two division world champion? Three division? Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let's pull that statement up from, from Devin Haney. Because Gervonta Davis said, Roley going to stop him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. So let's check this. Let, let's check this statement out from Devin Haney. Just read between the lines. That's all I ask you to say. Uh, all, that's all I ask you to do. Um, Devin Haney, this is according to Michael Benson. Devin Haney has insisted that he wants to fight Subriel Matias in a WBC and IBF super lightweight world title unification, which is great news in all honesty. I made a video about it. But this is the quote right here. I'm the guy that steps up when nobody wants to. First statement. That's letting you know that he feels like he's the only one that wants to step to Subriel or is willing to step to Subriel. They might need me to save the day. So he's pretty much coming out and telling you that, like, Subriel is the fucking super villain. <laughs> so if he's, comparing, if he's comparing himself to a superhero in terms of saving a day, what does that make Subriel? The villain, right? Fight the guy that these other guys don't want to fight. He's telling you that, no, that these guys don't want to fight Super L, but I will. So is it me? Like, bro, I'm not trying to say that Super L is intimidating, none of that. I'm just going off of what's been going on at 140 lately. And none of these guys really mentioned Super L's name. Did y'all hear Hitchens, Hitchison's uh, interview when sp was spoken about uh, Super L? He act like he don't want no smoke. Oh, I, I wouldn't. I don't rock with the IBF. Nigga just shit it on the whole sanctioning body just so he won't have a reason to fight Super L. Oh, I don't like how I feel with that rehydration process. Or oh. disgusting, bro. You talking like you a champion or you accomplished something? Hitchinson, you haven't done shit in boxing yet, man. For you to be talking like that, even if you did accomplish something, you still sound like you turkey. Keep it a thousand. You know what I'm saying? But this is Devin Haney right here telling you that these guys don't want to fight Subriel and the motherfucker might have to come in and save the day to fight this man because nobody else wants to. So if another champion is telling you this, then it must be true. They don't want to fight this man. Who do you think Matias beats out of the championship? Out of the champion? He beats... I, I, I Listen... I think he's capable of being all of them. I think that I, I got Devin beating Matias. I think that he'll outbox him. But I think everybody else will fall to his pressure, bro. I think Tia Fimo 
will have a real tough time with Super L. I think that Isaac Cruz will have a tough time with Super L. That'll be a hell of a fight, though, man. Oh, man, I would love to see. Isaac Cruz versus Matias. Oh, my God. They're going to need to – they're going to have to have that stretcher on standby, bro. Standby. I would love to see that. Isaac Cruz versus Subriel Matias probably to be the most gangster-ass fight to make at 140 pounds. What are the most gangster-ass fights – to make in boxing, period. Oh my God. My nigga. And then, uh, bro, imagine that, bro. If I was a matchmaker for PBC, bro, I'd be on my darn king shit, bro. All these motherfuckers would fight each other. Yo, I would do, because, you know, Super L is not with PBC no more. He's with Matron, right? But let's just say, in a fantasy world, right? In a perfect world, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Fantasy matchups, right? We get one card, right? With current fights that are relevant right now, I would do. I don't know if I should do Earl or Bud, but I think Bud is more deserving. So let's say Bud Fundura, main event, right? Subriel, Isaac Cruz. Two unification fights back to back. Now wait, it's not. Is a unification of a guy got two belts, another one got one, I'm, or the guy got none? I don't know. Whatever. Two belts on the line for both fights, and then for the third fight, the third fight, bro. Damn, this one was gonna be a little wild card, but nah, I ain't gonna do that one. With relevant fights right now, let's do Earl Spence versus Tim Zhu. Fire. They both coming off losses, fight each other, nigga. Bud, Sebastian Fundura, Isaac Cruz, Sue Brielle, Earl, Tim Zhu. Silk said you, you should put Cruz and Matias as the main event. I would, but Bud is the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, so I'm going to give you that main event slot. Fire. That's pay-per-view right there. You know what I'm saying? That's an $80 pay-per-view right there. They made all the fights made very well and then knockouts. Yeah, you know, it's hypothetical as J Cash. You know, I'm just I'm just dreaming. You know what I'm saying? I'm just dreaming. Highly, highly doubt that that will actually come to reality, especially on the same card. But, you know, a man could dream, can he? Miles Jordan says, Benavidez versus Better Beef. Bivol or Bivol, Matias versus Cruz, Earl versus Tim, Bud versus Fondora. Man, fuck that. They make a card like that, nigga. I'm there. Fuck a pay-per-view. I'm there. I'm flying out. I'm there, bro. Let's do it. I'm with that. I don't give a fuck. Where is that? Vegas, LA, Texas. Let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Is Haney Davis a 50-50 or you favor someone? I think that's a 50-50, man. You know, I think that they both have qualities that beat each other. Like prior to the, if we talking about 135 Haney, I probably would have edged that out to tank. You know what I'm saying? Because I was noticing that, you know, Haney was leaving some fight at the gym when he was cutting, when he was doing them bad weight cuts at 35. But it seems like in that Regis Pro Grace fight that Devin Haney seemed rejuvenated. You know, that extra five pounds helped him. It seemed like he was a little bit of a different fighter, seemed more energetic. You see what I mean? It seemed like he was more like on his toes type shit. It just looked like a different fighter, in my opinion. It looked like he uh, was slightly modified in that performance. 
So if we talking about 140 Haney versus Tank, which I mean, it got no choice but to be 140 Haney because Haney said he's not going back down. So uh, yeah, shout out to Bo Mac, man. He just wrote me again. But uh, <clears throat> at 140, I got it as a 50 50 fight. You know, uh, I think that they both have things that they could use against each other. I think that uh, Javante Davis's ring IQ, his hand speed, his counter punching ability, his well roundedness overall could definitely give Devin Haney some fits along when uh, he turns that pressure up. You know what I mean? And he starts placing good shots to the body and shit like that. I think that that could really wear down Devin Haney and possibly get him up out of there. However, Devin Haney has a lot of skills on his end that could frustrate uh, Devin, uh, Javante Davis. You know, the jab, you know, his distance, his understanding of the ring. You know what I mean? He Devin Haney always knows where he's at at all times when he's around the ring. You know what I mean? And that takes a certain level of experience to, like, really get an understanding. It's like when you, like, for my basketball players out there, you know, you know, uh, you could play at a – if you play at a court long enough, you're going to know your sweet spots around the court, whether it's the corner three or if you're shooting from the elbow, the, the right elbow, whatever the situation may be. Maybe the foul line is is uh, your best money shot. Um, it gets to the point where you get so understanding of the ball court that it's like you can't miss from any spot because you've been shooting over there for so long. Um, in comparison to, like, Devin Haney, you know, he's been boxing so long and um, has picked up uh, – so much in his experience with boxing, it seems like he knows where he's at at all times in the ring. But, you know, it takes a certain level of experience to like really get that shit down pat. You feel what I mean? Uh, low nose boxer says Tanks win over Cruz age well. I said that right after the win. That's a fact. I agree with you. Uh, but you know, I think that Devin Haney's understanding of range and distance along with the jab, the mobility and stuff like that. I think that he'll give Tank a lot of fits, especially when he, uh, Tank is attempting to like close the gap. You feel what I mean? So I think that they both got qualities that could, you know, mess each other's game plan up. I think it's ultimately going to come down to who had the better training camp, who was more well-prepared and, and shit like that. You know, Devin Haney, with him being at 140 now, you know, it's clear to see that he has the size advantage. But, you know, I'm not – really seeing Devin Haney use his size to an advantage against Tank. You know what I mean? Because um, when using your side, then using your side, your size essentially means like bullying a fighter. And, you know, Devin's not capable of bullying Tank to keep it a thousand. You know what I'm saying? He, he's not going to be able to do that. But what he can use um, to his advantage is his reach, and his height, which Devin Haney has shown to be really good at. So I look at it as a 50-50 fight at 140. I think that the version of this version of Devin at 140 is a 50-50 fight with Tank, man. I don't see many people beating uh, Devin Haney at 140. I'm going to keep it a buck. You know what I mean? Maybe Subrell could provide some obstacles and stuff like that. Maybe he could push Devin to the limit. I don't know, bro. I don't see none of the champions beating Devin at all. I think the only one that could really defeat him, you know, amongst the elites is possibly Shakur or Tank. I don't see nobody. I don't see nobody beating him. But shout out to Bo Mac, you know what I mean, for being in touch. You know what I'm saying? For answering the text. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy right there. That's a good dude. Yeah, Earl look like he big as fuck right now. His neck all big, face all fat and shit, big ass head. His jacket look like it's like a fucking XL. He wildin'. He ain't tripping. Yeah, Tanks wins over Bar Barrios age well also. Yeah, for sure. Outside of Subriel, Haney will beat T.O. and Isaac. That's a fact. Isaac, Isaac, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Yeah, that's a fact. All right, Lo, I'll send you the link. We'll just chop it up for a little bit because I'm going to get up out of here in a little bit. Probably do like 10, 15 more minutes. So if you want to chop it up, let's chop it up. 
You know what I'm saying? But we got 28 people in the building, man. This is a pretty pop live, dog. I appreciate everybody that came through and showed love to the channel. You know what I mean? We got 28 people, man. Let's get 28 likes, man. Let's get 28 likes, man. If you appreciate the content, if you a fan of the channel, whatever the situation may be, if you a firm supporter, just hit the like button, man. As soon as you come in. Let's see. We got, oh, we got 37 likes. Shit, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got. We got 39 likes, man. Well, it says 40 now. Shout out to the nation and the mob, man. Shout out to the nation and the mob. We in the building for sure. We got my boy Low in the building. What's going on, man? Yo, what up? What up, man? Talk to me. What's going on? Pardon me. I had a feeling that we were going to see an upset. Because I told people that neither Tim Zoo. Or Sebastian Fandora are A level fighters. People wrote Sebastian Fandora down. They wrote him, they, they wrote him off because of that performance when he got knocked out. But leading into that fight, he was looking like another Antonio Margarito, a tall fighter that applies tall man pressure. He was getting dudes out of there. So when I seen that he was a replacement, I said that he's more of a live dog than Keith Thurman. And sure enough, I was right. It was a great fight. And Sebastian Fandura, once again, at 154, that's a weight class where there's not really a, a distinctive top dog. Like anybody can be anybody on any given night. The only one that was consistently holding it down up to a certain point was, was little Charlo. Jamel. Jamel. So in a way, I'm glad that Sebastian won because now if Crawford is going to pursue 154, he presents the type of physical style, his height and all that, that, that Crawford hasn't seen, even though I got confidence Crawford could beat him. But I'd rather see Crawford excuse me, against that type of style instead of fighting Tim, Tim Zhu or instead of fighting Errol Spence Jr. in a rematch. So I'm all right with that. As far as Pitbull, once again, the 135 division of guys that are more special. 140 been good fighters. 140, 135 got more special fighters. Teal moved up, did what he did. Devin moved up, did what he did. Ryan moved up. He ain't really do nothing, but he did a big fight. Pitbull moved up and beat Rowley. So now 140 is looking even more, more depth to that division. The 140 pound division. And I always said that Pitbull is Tank's best win, hands down. He's an underrated fighter. He got underrated defense. And people make excuses for Tank. Oh, he broke his hand. That's why he couldn't knock him out. He broke his hand in the fight because Cruz caught that uppercut with his hand. You know that. You know boxing. You know what I mean? He caught his uppercut with his hand. He broke his fucking hand in the fight. So I don't want to hear no excuses. Pitbull is a durable fighter, bro. And he'll give anybody a tough fight. I'm impressed. Yo, that that you you speaking just now just made me uh come up with a pretty good question in my opinion, man. So I'm gonna ask you this real quick. With you just mentioning that all of these guys are moving to 140, does this influence Gervonta Davis to officially make his move up to 140, or does no. he feel like? Uh, let me let me ask you. Or do you feel like Gervonta Davis is like I'm the star, I'm the one. If you want to fight me, you're going to have to go down to 135. What do you think? There's a, there's a saying that says, show me who you are and I believe you. That's what Tank showed me he is. He showed me that he feels he's bigger than the belts. He's bigger than the accolades. He's bigger than his contemporaries. So I believe that Tank is going to continue to fight at 135. However, I don't think he's going to fight Shakur. I hope I'm wrong, but... I don't think Tank is going to do that. I think Tank is going to want everybody to fight him 135. I don't see Tank fighting Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, or Teofimo Lopez, or even Lomachenko. You know what I mean, Tank? Two out of those it, four fights are at 140, though. Two I don't see Tank fighting those guys. You mentioned, you mentioned they will be at 140. Exactly. The only 140 guys I could see Tank fighting is if he rematches Pitbull Cruz, which is somebody he beat. But Tank has shown that he hasn't 
He's not fighting guys that are not outside of the style that suits him. He fights guys that are – he fights good fighters because obviously Pitbull is good. But stylistically, he never fought a guy that boxes, a guy that moves around. He fights guys that stand in front of him. He's matched properly, you know. He's not matched like the way T.O. or even Devin, because I could say Devin is matched on a high level because he did fight Lomachenko. Those are the only two guys that fight all styles, in my opinion. Everybody else is fighting guys in front of him. So I don't know if Tang's going to fight them, but I personally believe he should because he's getting older and those guys, those will be big money fights. You know what I mean? For sure. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, you know, I actually wanted – I had reached out to you that night, man, because I wanted to hear what you guys say about your boy Tiafimo, man. What's going on with these with these sources, Here? with this information? What do you think? If this the is fight? true – Yeah, what, what you think about the fight if it's true? Because, they you know, they – I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm all right with that because he's keeping busy. All his contemporaries are busy right now. Ryan and Devin are busy. Subrio got a fight coming up. Tank got a fight coming up. Barbosa's fighting on the Devin Haney card. So all of his contemporaries are busy. So if Tio's going to fight three times a year or four times a year, if any, if boxers, if fans like us, we want boxing to go back, like back in the days when guys fought more often. Back in the days, dudes fought a good, tough fight. Then they fought a weak guy. And then they fought a good guy if they fought multiple times a year, right? So if we want to see our fighters fight more often, that's what they got to do. Tio, I'm going to give him a pass. I know a lot of people don't like him personally on his, on his antics and the shit he says. I don't like the stuff he says, but I like how he fights. He fought the best competition out of everybody in their 20s. You know what I mean? So I've been making a strong case now, though. He fought, he fought Sandor Martin, a slick boxer. He fought yeah. Josh Taylor. He fought Jermaine Ortiz, a slick boxer, right? So this is like when oh, Danny Garcia was going through the ringer. Danny was fighting Eric Morales. He fought Zab. He fought Khan. He fought Lucas. And then he had Mauricio. Mauricio turned out to be a cherry pick going wrong. It was a tough fight. And then he had his Rob Salka. So I think this is Tio's Rob Salka. So I'm going to give him a pass on this, ho hoping that in December he comes back they had to had a fight with either a Devin or Subrio or even a um shit. I'll even take Keyshawn Davis, you know what I mean? So I don't got a problem with that. Teal's entitled to that because like I said, he's been fighting the most difficult styles and the best competition in his weight class, in my opinion. Okay, so what do you what do you say to uh Robert Garcia that had came out with the tweet saying that, you know. They had uh, Tiafimo and Ty Rank had offered that fight to Raymond. They say yes, but he followed through with with with, with, with Claggett. Do you feel like uh, Mordecai is you know not ready or is not like what, what do you think of that? Because Robert Garcia confirmed that they said yes to the fight, but uh, you know Tiafimo and his team seem to be going in a different direction. Mordecai is a very good fight. He's at 135 pounds. Um, I think I never really seen him fight. So I can't tell you how he, how he matched up stylistically. But once again, I'm okay with that. Tio's at 140. The guy he's fighting at 140. And once again, he's having a stay busy fight. You know, if you're going to have fights against guys on the highest level, you can't be fighting four times a year, three times a year against guys on the highest level. The only other guy that did it was Canelo. And even he, during that three-fight span that year, whatever it was, I think he fought Yildrum. He fought Billy Joe. He fought Yildrum, which was the soft touch, and he fought Caleb Plant. So with Tio, I'm getting, I'm getting that he fought Jermaine, which was a good fighter. He's fighting this guy, which is, which should be a soft touch if he, if he takes him seriously. And then afterwards, he can take on somebody decent, somebody with a name, somebody that's, somebody that's a top dog. So I don't got a problem with it, you know what I mean? Because no fighter, all of our favorite fighters, bro, you and I are both historians. If you look up their resumes, they all have fights against guys that have bad records in between big fights when they were active. Because back then, champions fought five times a year, bro. You know didn't, I mean? didn't Joe Lewis have like a bum of the month tour or some shit like that? Yeah. If you look up box rec, you look up all look up James Tony, look up Chavez, all those guys, they fought four times a year, five times a year, sometimes six times. 
and these were champions. And you would see them sometimes with guys with records of 20 and 15. But back then there was no social media. Social media gives gives a voice to a lot of people it was that say things that wouldn't really say things in real life. And I hate to say it this way, because I don't want to sound wrong, but fuck it. I'm a little nice right now. Social media gave a lot of word, a lot of voice to cowards. You know what I mean? So I don't really take people seriously when they criticize stuff. If they never fought, they never did anything at all, then you know, you ain't qualified to criticize another fighter on that level because what you did, you know what I mean? People just talk crazy, bro. You know that boxing's a tough sport, man. That's a fact. That's a fact. I actually, and, I actually like that point of view because I was really rocking with the perspective, like, man, that that Steve Claggett fight was a uh, was a disappointment in all honesty. It is. You know what I, mean? I, I thought it was a disappointment, but you know, I mean, if Tiafimo was gonna fight one or two more times this year, I would prefer two more times, honestly, because I think that he's gonna dispose of Claggett. I think. I think he's gonna stop him with them for with the film that I was studying. Um, I would like to see get back in the mix, bro. At least four fights this year. If he gets four fights this year, I'll give him a pass for that. But it was here's my problem. December. Here's my problem with the Claggett fight, right? Like with Tia Fimo, right? Because I really studied it. I studied everybody's styles. Tia Fimo, the weaknesses that he has, he doesn't know how to cut the ring off effectively. He doesn't use his jab. Consistency, consistently in different manners. If T.O. was to use a jab, you stick it, you flick it, you paw it, you faint it, you hook off it. If he uses jab consistently, he'd probably be unbeatable because when it comes to reflexes and counterpunching skills, he's the most athletically gifted out of that full court, right? But he doesn't use it enough. And if he knew how to cut the ring off, that would add another wrinkle to him because when T.O. fought Jermaine, and Sandor Martin, to me, he won that fight, those fights based on the fact that he was coming forward and he was out countering those guys while coming forward, but he wasn't cutting the ring off like you see guys like Canelo and Triple G do. So sometimes you got to work on these things with weaker com You muted yourself, my brother. If he would have chosen an opponent that's, let's say, not that on the highest level, but likes to run, just so you can practice how to cut the ring off, that's cool. But you're going back to fighting a guy that comes forward that's made for you. So what are you going to do when you do fight an elite fighter like a Devin Haney that boxes and moves, or Shakur Stevenson that boxes, even Tank, because Tank likes to move around sometimes. So he better be working on these things in the gym, opposed that's to just taking a fight against somebody that's going to make him look good. But you better work on them things in the ring, because a lot of people feel they can just out move around and make you the bag. Yeah. Yo, Ma. Hold on, hold on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, I'm on yo, I'm on live right now, yeah. Oh hey, no, go ahead, low, go ahead, chop it up. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I was saying, man. Um, shout out to everybody listening to the chat. Like I said, bro, Tio has to work on cutting the ring off. He got to work on using the jab in different fashion, you know. And this fight against Steve Claggett is a tune-up fight. It's the type of fight that he could look good and excel so that his next fight will be a fight that a lot of people would tune into. If he goes in there and scores a vintage Tia Fimo Lopez knockout, you know what I mean? Big shout-out to Masuma TV. You know what I mean? Mazuma Nation. Mazuma Nation. This is Low Nose Boxing. You know, you can tune into me as well. Tonight was a great card. Pitbull Cruz versus Roly Romero. Roly did display some underrated boxing skills. He was moving around well. He was using that stab jab to the, to the stomach. He did some good work. But Roly didn't move his head. Because Roly not moving his head. That's the reason why he was getting knocked upside his head because Roley was just standing straight up. Musuma, I was telling you, I was telling your audience that Roley boxed better than I expected. He was moving around well. He used a stab jab to the stomach, but once again, he stands straight up. He got no head movement. So every time Cruz was coming over the top with the looping hooks and the overhand rights, Roley was right there. And that's why he got stopped. He got his pack busted. Yeah, man. Um, I just feel like uh Roley Romero, 
he 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 I seen him resort to that against Ismael Barroso, right? Where he was using the movement and you know he was attempting to, to box the man. And um in return, he had gotten knocked down. You see what I mean? Um, only when he resorted to doing what he does best, you know, things started to go in his favor, right? Um, the difficulty with Isaac Cruz is, is that he's fucked regardless. You know, I was really thinking about it. I'm like, yo, if he does the movement, Isaac Cruz is going to cut the ring off and hit him with some big shots because Roley Romero is defensively irresponsible, bro. He does not bring his hands back. He overcommits on shots and he leaves a lot of openings. And Isaac Cruz puts everything behind each punch that he throws. So I just knew that it was going to be a bad style matchup. Now, on top of that, um, with Roley Romero, if he goes back to what he naturally does, what got him the knockouts early in his career, that's going to play in Isaac Cruz's favor as well because he wants you to bang with him. He wants you to get in exchanges with him because he's confident in um, his ability to defend shots and, you know, uh, let, letting go of his shots. He believes in his power and he believes in his chin. Roley Romero in recent fights shows that he has uh, – he doesn't believe in his chin. Uh, ever since that Javante Davis knockout, um, it seems like he's been having like a mental uh, obstacle. You know, he's been uh, challenged mentally behind the idea that um, he may not be able to take a, a good shot. You know what I'm saying? He's been questioning his chin ever since then. You know, him getting stopped and sparring and getting dropped against Barroso and being hurt by Barroso and shit like that. But um, it's just been a whole downward, a whole downward spiral since the Javante Davis loss. You know what I mean? So I knew that it was going to be a matter of time before Isaac Cruz clipped him. You feel what I, I mean? Was not, I was rooting for Roley because Roley's good for boxing. He is. Yeah. He's good for boxing. I know that Roley has matured as a young man. Listening to his interviews, he's matured a lot. You know what I mean? But you know, I knew that people would get him because Roley, for one. He doesn't got inside work. Roley fights at a certain range. He doesn't show that he's crafty to fight on the inside, you know, in the quarters, close quarters or uppercuts. And he's not known as a boxer. He's a slugger. He's athletic. He moves around well, but he's not. A, he's not. He's not um, fundamentally skilled. You know, he's not a Javante and the other guys that know how to use the ring and, and set traps and do pivots. So I knew. It was a matter of time before he would get knocked out. I called that fight exactly how it went down. I thought Cruz would get him out of there earlier. But I ain't going to lie to you, man. I'm impressed with Cruz. He got he got underrated defense. He catches punches pretty well with his with his gloves. And I don't think it was a fluke. I don't think it was because Tank hurt his hand and he ain't knocked him out. No. Tank hurt his hand in the fight, bro. That's like people that make excuses for Lucas Matisse when he had his eye busted against Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia busted his eye, bro. Right? People mm -hmm. were saying that Lucas, oh, Lucas Matisse's eye was all right. He wouldn't have lost like that. No, Danny busted his eye. And Tank Davis got his hand broken because Pitbull Cruz knew how to defend himself from that uppercut. Pitbull Cruz is a durable, a very durable fighter. I don't got, I don't really got anybody stopping him. I got guys beating him. I think Tank, T.O., Devin, and Shakur beat him, but I don't see none of those guys stopping him, bro. You don't think you don't think uh Matias has a chance? Um, once again, Matias has a chance. Stop like the volume and the pressure and the consistently letting his hands go. That'll be a great fight. That'll be like the the um what's that word they say in Russian? The immovable, the immovable object versus you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had a couple drinks, but I don't know because, like I said, Matias, I've never seen Matias have to fight on the back foot and use his jab. For me, I would like to see Matias use his jab and be sort of like Ike Corte because he kind of reminds me of Ike Corte without the jab. He comes forward, you know about Ike Corte, right? Of course. He got he got the he got the the pickable style. He comes forward, he throws sharp sharp. sharp Short punches on the inside, but he don't got the jab. If he had the eye quote jab, he'd be more complete. So I don't really know how Subrio would do with Pitbull and vice versa, but that definitely would be a, a fight worth seeing, absolutely. But I've seen Subrio get rocked before. I think I think um Pitbull might have better defense. He might be more sturdy as far as taking a punch. But once again, Subrio knows how to fight on the inside. 
He got inside work, which Rody don't got. I don't think Subaru is a one punch knockout artist. He weighs you down, but that'll be a great fight, though. I would like to see that fight. Yeah, man, that's definitely on my list. Now that uh, Isaac Cruz on the way to get himself into the mix at 140, I definitely want to see that, man. That would be the Puerto Rico Mexico matchup because we haven't had a real one in a while. That's, that's exactly what I said after uh, Pitbull won. I say, yo, let's give let's get Matias and Cruz on board. Mexico versus Puerto Rico. Let's get it popping. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good fight. And 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 don't get me wrong, I think Cruz could win that fight also because Cruz does that. He got inside game, and even though Cruz, I mean not Cruz, um, Matias, and even though Matias gets hit, Matias is not a punching bag neither. Matias has underrated defense. I see how he catches punches sometimes, and yeah. um, they both got underrated defense. Yeah, I can see him breaking Cruz up. I think Cruz got a little bit better defense because he moves his head more. But on the inside, I can see Matias getting off some good work. He's not going to outbox him. That's going to be a fight where it's going to be who's going to take, who's going to stand up at the end of the day. That's not going to be a boxing fight at all. I don't see Matias moving around boxing. I see them fighting on the inside, banging it out. Battle yeah, neither Matias. one of them, what makes it such an exciting fight, neither one of them dudes take steps back. No. So that's no. going to be real interesting to see who take the back foot in that fight. The irresistible force versus the immovable object. That's what I was trying to say. That's exactly what that is. That's that's, that's, that's the best fight. I love it. I love it, bro. This just uh, sometimes upsets are good for boxing, man. You know, no, and Pit, Pit, Pitbull winning that belt makes that he makes that division more, more interesting. interesting because when you ask when you ask me about who's the top 10. You know, I, I always like to mention the belt holders first. And it was kind of hard mentioning Roley as number four when you got other guys that I think are better. Because my top 10 at 140, I got to go with T.O. number one because he beat the man. I got to go with Devin. I got to go with Subrio. Now I can say Pitbull respectfully for, for another champion. Because I, I had a problem saying Roley. You got Richard Hitchens. You got Gary Antoine. You still got Josh. You still got Regis. You still got Jose Ramirez. You got Catterall. Like you got a deep division. You got Liam Liam Pyro. He's a good fighter. That's a very deep. You got Ryan Garcia. You feel me? You got Tank if yeah. he wants to move up. So 140 right now to me is the best ever that I can recall. I'm gonna go on the limb and say this is the best ever at 140. To my years of watching boxing, this might be the best 140 ever that I've seen. During my lifetime. Nah, just to adjust this uh 9800, I wasn't saying that him I, I was about to transition on to the to the Fundora and uh Tim Zhu shit, you know what I mean? In terms of upsets, I understand that Pitbull was the favorite going into the Roly fight, and rightfully so. I said that myself. I was about to transition to the other one, but we gonna we gonna stick to, we gonna stick to this topic though. You know what I mean? Uh some good yo I, I love i love that that shit happened like that because roley you know roley was was on the type of time where it was like he only wanted to fight certain individuals you know what i mean um he always he always spoke different whenever other guys names were brought up like yo what's the possibility of you like unifying with haney and he'd be like oh haney has horrible genetics like he'll talk about everything except actually fighting the motherfucker uh you know he had that mandatory with o'hara davies he found a way up out of there somehow you know what i mean um, he didn't want to fight the old man again, neither. Yeah, he didn't even want to run it back with Barroso. He didn't you know want to fight Tio, neither. When they asked him about Tio, he said, I want to fight Tio, that used to be my friend. Yeah. He wanted to hold the belt hostage and just pick like pick fighters as they go. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that he got up out of the picture. and he Because I think that he would have he would have been the reason why like nobody would have became undisputed at 40. Because let's say Devin Haney would have went on to be on that pursuit and uh, – he grabs three out of the four belts, and now he's just trying to make the fight with Roley. Roley would have tried; he would have found every way to try to get up out of that situation. You know what I'm saying? He'd have been more hell bent on fighting somebody like Ryan Garcia. Like that's... well, Pitbull, Pitbull shown that he does got duck in him though too, because he duck, he did duck Shakur Stevenson. <laughs> he did duck Shakur, and people, a lot of people, and let me piggyback off that because you sent me the invite to your live. I was sleeping, and I read what the video was about. He was talking about what we just spoke about with Theo's opponent, 
and you also mentioned Shakur's opponent. To the to Shakur's defense, right? I'm a Shakur fan as well, but I'm not being biased. Shakur's on the last fight of that contract, right? Top rank is not gonna give Shakur Stevenson the best fighters in their weight class. If you watch wrestling, right? You watch wrestling back in the day, at least. You sir. Yeah. All right. Let's say Triple H is leaving WWE. He got his last fight at WrestleMania. He's fighting for the belt. Even though wrestling is fake, they're not going to let him leave with the belt if he's going to WCW. So if Shakur Stevenson had the last fight on top rank, he's not going to get the most desirable fight where he can beat one of their guys or a champion and take their belt. You know what I mean? Because they learned that from when Devin Haney took those belts and left. So that's why I feel Shakur has the type of competition he's going to face. Because they're not going to give him a T.O. They're not going to give him Matafilia. They're not going to give him the other Mexican boy. I forgot his name. Um, The one that came up from 130. They're not going to give him none of those guys when he could this leave. Is the, this is the thing. Because they had asked Bob Arum about the possibility of Shakur re-signing with them. Right? And Bob be keeping it a buck. Like, Bob is at that age now where... He don't be capping about shit. He say whatever the fuck he want, and that's just be, and that's just what it be. He seemed real, real, real optimistic about Shakur re-signing with him. I don't. I, I gotta find the interview. I seen it not too. It was a while back, but he was like, "Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, Shakur. You know, he's a he's a phenomenal fighter, and you know, he'll be he re-signing." Why the hell is he so optimistic about that? I know that Jay Prince and Bob Arum are like this business in a business sense a lot of the fighters that are with top rank you know they managed by jay prince like uh what's this fucking the real uh what the fuck is jared anderson and jared anderson, yeah, big baby. Yeah, fighters that he's you know i think like the only fighter that he managed that wasn't with fucking top rank was like andre ward and shit you know what i'm saying so uh even floyd back in the day you feel me so uh yeah, man, I, I don't know. He seemed pretty optimistic. He about had James we Page too. I remember he had James Page as well. Mm -hmm. He was he was a welterweight champion in the nineties. Okay. Doing yeah. the I don't know, man. Like if he ends up re-signing with Top Rank and they give him that type of opponent, man, in my head, it's either gonna let me know that like God, it's either one guys don't really want to fight him, or two Top Rank is really going out of their way to try to destroy this kid, bro. Or at least drop his stock in the game. Bro. What they what they've been doing lately with Shakur has been putting his stock down the drain. When they when they give him that fight on a Thursday against Edwin De Los Santos, that hurt Shakur. He that dropped the ball himself. He dropped the ball. Maybe because he made it worse with the performance. But you 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 setting your fighter up to fail if you got them fighting on a Thursday because you know you ain't gonna sell no tickets on no Thursday night, man. People got shit to do. They did that twice already. They did that with T.O. too. Yeah, they did it with T.O. too, and that's when T.O. was running his mouth about top rank. Yeah, you know. um, I feel like top rank do that to fighters when they try to teach them a lesson. Top rank, has, top rank has a tendency of teaching their fighters a lesson because they did it to Rigo. When, when Guillermo Rigondale beat Nonito Donaire, who was the house yes. fighter, who was it the was next Manny Pacquiao, they, 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 they disrespected Rigo's whole career, bro. He just dominated. At the time, Nonito was a top five pound for pound. And Rigo didn't just beat him. He beat the brakes off him. He really busted his pack. You know what I mean? And they dissed him. They, they didn't even want to put him on TV no more because he messed up He messed up their plans. Just like when T.O. beat Loma, they messed up his plans. They give T.O. Sr. the middle finger at the press conference. Bob Aaron did that. You know, so certain fighters, he favored certain guys. And it's a shame because he should have been putting more investment behind Shakur Stevenson because he let Devin Haney, who was a self-promoted fighter, come over and accomplish and get the fight that Shakur Stevenson should have gotten, being that he's the in-house in fighter. I could see where and what triggered Shakur to, to act the way he acted towards Devin because he hated on Devin. But, you know, it's boxing. Shakur was supposed to become a champion. Shakur was supposed to get the Lomachenko fight. Devin did, Devin left. Shakur feeling salty, salty about that. And I don't blame him. I think they did do a disservice with Shakur Stevenson. I, I believe that. They they shit it on Shakur. And they somewhat shit it on Tio as well, to an extent. 
Because how even the politics, how many pound for pound rankings still got Lomachenko? Come on, man, that's crazy, bro. The boy disappeared off them rankings. Bro, he lost two fights within his last five fights, and, and he's a top ten pound for pound. That's crazy, bro. Is he still on the rankings? I don't even be seeing him no more. I mean, I haven't checked because I don't be, I don't look at magazines. Everything now with me is YouTube. But I heard he's still in the rankings. Errol Spence got his brains damn near beaten out of him, and they got him on the rankings too. Yeah. Um, he said, what you think? Hold on. BJJ says, what you think about Earl getting a title shot already with Fundura? Well, it's not solidified yet, but it definitely looks like something that PBC is trying to push. Um, I think it's I, I think that they they doing a disservice or attempting to do a disservice on Terrence Crawford. You know, historically, PBC don't really rock with Terrence Crawford or like that. Like I said earlier in the rant that I had on live, they didn't want to give Terrence Crawford that opportunity against uh, Earl Spence at, when they first made that fight happen. They wanted Earl Spence and Keith Thurman to rumble. You know what I mean? It was Earl Spence's stubbornness and willingness to fight uh, Pacquiao. I mean, uh, not Pacquiao. Uh, Crawford, by any means, that that fight was, you know, situated and made. You know what I mean? So it sounds like PBC is just trying to keep things in-house again. You know what I mean? They don't want Terrence Crawford to get that type of opportunity. They feel like he's, uh, you know, bad for business, I would say. And they said that he's hard to do business with. So with that being known, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that they're not putting their fighter on the line against uh, a fighter that's not with PBC. You feel what I'm saying? Um, I think that I think that they feel like Terrence Crawford is a bad style matchup for Fundora or whoever they fighter may be, and I don't think they want to lose that. They don't want to take the they don't want to take those belts outside of PBC, man. They want to keep their belts in house because them belts bring them power. You feel that's what I mean? That's a great matchup. I would love that. That's a very interesting style matchup. Yo, but that's Crawford. gonna be real interesting because Bud is typically the dude who has the longer reach. You know what I mean? And, and shit like he's the one who's able to keep people outside and. And box, it's gonna be real interesting how the way he approaches Sebastian Fundora because Sebastian Fundora got like an 80 inch reach and the man is six six. And I see I see Bud though. he fought tall this fight. He didn't really fight that tall like that, you know. He don't bro, fight he like that can, bro, if you watch that fight, bro. He was keeping him outside with the one two the entire time. That man threw he landed over a hundred jabs on Tim Zoo from that stat seat. I seen bro. He was he got keeping, dog, it, keeping it simple. Bop, 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 bop. He was just keeping straight shots out there, and Tim Zoo was never able to, like, really, you know, get his range down. He was just boxing outside the whole time. And the reason why was because Tim uh, Fandora was just keeping it long and rangy. He got but a lot of dog in him, though, too. I give it to him. He got a lot of dog in him. He got decent power. He's durable. Come forward. He got a great work rate. I want to see that fight. I'd rather see that fight with Bud, even though Tim Zoo is still a good fighter. He knows how to cut the ring off good, which is a lost art. But I want to see Bud versus Sebastian Fundura. I don't care for the Earl fight, but I don't got a problem with it because Earl is a former champion. you know. But I want to see Bud fight somebody because Bud is not fighting that active. He's not fighting as often. I mean, you know what yeah. I mean? So I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, Bud – Versus Fundora, and then Earl and and Zoo is the co-main and the winner fight each other. And what's going on with Charlo? What's going on with him? Boy, he been MIA, bro. I don't know what's up with him. Cause he Charlo, been... at the end of the day, he really is. You know, that's why these 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 weight these fights, bro. When dudes be jumping up weight classes, that shit ruins them. You know what I mean? It ruined me. Jumped up two weight classes, fought Canelo, ruined him. Now he now he ain't doing nothing. Same thing like when Mikey Garcia moved up and for Earl. Mikey Garcia should have stood at 135. He could have got a Lomachenko fight. You know what I mean? So that was a bad job what happened to Charlo, man, because I like the Charlo at 154 now. He let Tim become the top dog, and Tim couldn't hold it down. Now, Tim lost that belt, you know, so fuck it. I want to see Bud. I don't mean to curse. My bad. I want to see Crawford and Sebastian Fundura at 154. And then Crawford and Canelo, if possible, if Canelo was not going to fight David Benavidez, which is a whole nother discussion. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, man, this was a good conversation, man. I'm going to get up out of there, man. I appreciate you coming on and taking Anytime, the time to down and speak that boxing talk. You know what I mean? 
Always a pleasure to have you on. I appreciate everybody that was been on. We've been on for three hours and a half, man, and some change. So I appreciate appreciate everybody that came on and listened to the live fight commentary, chopped it up with your boy. The eight super chats I received, man. I'm grateful for all of them, man. Thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna get up out of here, man. I'm gonna get some rest, but I'll be back with some more. Boxing. God bless, my nigga. Have a good night, bro. We chop it up next time, bro. Appreciate appreciate you, homie. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get up out of here, y'all. It was a great live, man. Thank everybody that was on here and just made shit so much easier for me to talk this box of talk, man. I got some of the best uh supporters on YouTube, you know what I mean. If you appreciate the content that you just seen, you know, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification, select all so you'll know every time I'm going live or even dropping the video, man. But that's all I got for tonight, man. I appreciate everybody that came on. As always, man, shout out to the nation and the mob. I'm out of here, man. Peace.